Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Derek White. Joining me, as always, it's Owen. It's Owen. We just wanted to take a second and let you know that today's episode of Savage Saturday is sponsored by GhostBed. GhostBed's been a loyal sponsor of the Drinking Bros Podcast for over four years. Everybody loves GhostBed. I love GhostBed. I'm the proud owner of two ghost bed mattresses and two pillows and right now if you buy a mattress from ghost bed you get two free pillows and if you go to ghostbed.com slash drinking bros you can save 25 percent that's ghostbed.com slash drinking bros grab yourself a mattress two free pillows get some good sleep enjoy the show we're back. We're back. Another Savage Saturday. I think this is episode... 25. 25. That's almost half a year. It is. That means you and I have committed to one... Thing. Media thing. That's... That's a lot. We haven't done something our, like that. No. Um, in our record else. was like eight. Yeah. I think we did eight cooking yeah. shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then we were like, oh, we'll do one cooking show a month. I can commit to that. Dude. Turns out I can't. No. That was just asking too much. It's too much. Um, I'm feeling good today, man. How are you doing today? Owen. I'm doing great. Did you run this morning? I walked. Okay. How, yeah. how far did you walk? Five miles. Hmm. Yeah. My walk days are, are like... Would that take you like 35, 40 minutes? <laughs> I wish. How long, how long does it take you to walk five miles? Uh, over an hour. Okay. Yeah. Just enjoying it. Yeah. It's just kind of... Get circulation going. Getting fucking hot here. What time are you? What time are you going in the I'm morning? Starting at like four forty-five. No shit. Yeah, to try. That's to you're out of your house at four forty-five. Yeah. Not wake. Gee, yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. Get I up. Uh, I like waking up early, but five o'clock. That's when I seem to enjoy waking up and my body's ready. But yeah. anything before five, you're just gonna deal with a little bit of something. Yeah. You know, I'm not. I'm not gonna do the Jocko wake up at four thirty thing. No, it, 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 trust me, it'll go away as soon as it's not ninety eight degrees at yeah. five in the morning. But yeah, that sun starts to creep up here in Vegas, and it's miserable. It's hot. It's it's super hot here. Um, I'm excited. I, I know I'm why. I'm excited for today. Um, we have a very 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 special <laughs> guest. Uh, my friend. We've known each other 15, 16 years now. Yeah. Um, you've heard me talk about him quite a bit all over the over the years. Yeah, I mean, I've brought him up on the podcast and yep. every fucking interview I've ever done. Everything. Um, the and I and I was like, how do I summarize your introduction? But like, you're just you just have to be. You are the most influential character in so many big moments in my life. Um, we're joined by Sean Ensley today. Wow. Sean Ensley. Man. Flying in from Denver, Colorado. Thank All the you. way from um, Denver. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, and it's, uh, thanks, thanks for coming, man. And I know, um, uh, uh, you're, uh, we'll talk about, uh, this more later. You're expecting first kid, wife right. at home, That's seven right. months yeah. deep, yeah. seven nice months stretch. deep, full home pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. I say home stretch. Like I've been so like right. put out by it up to <laughs> yeah. this point. Oh, yeah. 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 My poor wife. She's, right. but yeah, dude, thank you for having me and uh, hello and happy Saturday savages. So I'm, uh, I'm excited. This is going to be, this is going to be fun. This is certainly, I fully expect this to be a two part episode. Yep. Um, cause I fucking, um, when, uh, or as for, as far as I go, when, when, when you talk, when Sean talks, I listen. And so it's like we're, um, but I've known you for yeah. 15 years and we've, I, I think our dynamic from my perspective has been like big brother, little brother type thing. And so like, whereas, whereas I, I know a lot about you, right? I want to get down into, you know, you know, this is an interview of who is Sean, sure, who's man. this, who's this, who's this guy that's been so, um, you know, you just been there for me and helped me like you played a role. You know, you organized that Tough Mudder team. That changed yep. my life. That's mm-hmm. right. You fucking played a big role in me getting my leg amputated finally. And then the years after, we've done cool shit together. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, I want to get to uh, figure out how you became so fucking good that you, you like you were able to help me <laughs> yeah, in those yeah. times. Like, uh, I mean, yeah. I feel like, you know, if we show you a little bit too much behind the curtain, you'll see just how average I truly am. Yeah. But, uh, Dude, thank you for the, the kind words, man. Absolutely. It's the fucking truth about yeah. a lot of people, you know, <laughs> right? like, um, like um, I kind of want to, don't want to burst this bubble right now where, you know, mm-hmm. the, the perception is mm-hmm. that I'm some sort of good dude. Like, let's yeah, let's go that. with that. Right. Yeah, I'm amazing <laughs> right. and perfect and That's flawless. Right. I've never so, made a mistake. Friend of the friend of the show wanted to bring you a little something. Um, you know, when we when I came out to Minnesota for your leg amputation, I brought you the leg lamp, your mm-hmm. major award. And so I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Obvious Plant, but this guy makes toys and then sneaks them into toy shelves. 
And so I brought you leg. I fucking, I have seen this on the internet. <laughs> it's an, it, it is a very, it's, and it says, um, you know, includes foot. So perfect. So I got, I um, thought you could maybe use that. Is, that's, it, a right, a, that is a, it a right or a left? Uh, it's a left leg, a but left. We'll, we'll fucking run with it. Um, backwards. But, um, dude, I'm going <laughs> to, uh, thank you. I've seen this. Uh, people send this to me on the internet. Dude, like yeah. the way the internet, like when you're an amputee, whenever anybody sees something amputee on the right. internet, they're like, Here I know comes. just who to send right. this to. Yep. <laughs> and, um, so I've seen this around. It's awesome to have one. Thank you. I'm sure it's not an original idea, but they are, uh, you know, they can be a little tricky to come by. So I thought you'd throw it up on your, I love me wall and. I'm going to have my boys play with this. There you go. They play with my uh, foot shells. I do see the feet laying around the house, which is <laughs> yeah, kind of funny. They, they play with the foot shells. And then the way they say tickle, because I we say tickle, 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 you know, yep. and, and Max is like gunga, gunga, gunga. So he'll grab, <laughs> my, he'll grab my foot shell and he'll be like gunga, gunga, gunga. He'll tickle my fake foot. There you um, go. And they tickle my fake foot when it's attached to my leg too. And I'm just like, oh, you don't understand. You don't get it. You don't, you don't understand. You're miss. Um, that's, you can never have enough legs. That's what that's, they say. That's what I, that's what, yeah. Um, a, a, adult collectible, not a toy ages 14 plus. We're going to break that rule. Yeah, I'm sure this it's is now, There's some weight to this. Yeah. It's probably got a, you know, rebar core or something that yeah. you want to keep in mind for the kids. Something toxic. Okay. You know? Yeah. Perfect. Right. Yeah. yeah Do not right. taunt super happy that's fun right. ball. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> should be okay. So that's awesome. That's a good gift. You know yeah. what? Maybe this can replace my knife. Oh, my that's podcast fine. pointer. Sure. Yep. Cause everybody thinks I'm just going to stab them or something. Right. Like right. That. I've never stabbed somebody so unintentionally. Days, I have right. nightmares about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's cool. Uh, I haven't gotten a gift on the show before. Well, they, you know, I didn't want to come in empty handed. So yeah, there you go. I never like most people just bring handed. booze. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, before we get into the interview, before we get into the long conversations, I'm, we're going, we're going slapper today. I told Sean. So one of the, I fucking love, like you are one of the few people <laughs> who just hasn't stopped making fun of me. Like I can I always thank you, know, you for that. Yeah, always, you know. Sean loves making fun of me for being like emo. And he's That's like, right. he's like, what are you going to do? Dye your hair black and put on your makeup right. and stuff like that. Um, so you were laughing. Cause like I told you, I was like, Hey, sometimes we go slapper. Sometimes we go sapper. Big and feelings, he, and, a lot yeah, of big right. feelings in those sad And he was just songs, like, right. that makes sense, dude. Yeah. Like his, sometimes that's what his facial expression says to me. It's like, <laughs> that's just how I know you to be, that's you know? Right. Um, <laughs> but I was, I was getting my, uh, you know, sometimes I warm up for the show and I bump music in the other room, you know, and I just try to get the energy going. Uh, the, today's, today's slapper. I found this off of a, uh, a Netflix show we watched called The Sinner. Okay. Have you seen it or heard of it? No. no. It's, it's it's awesome. And it's a it's it's um I can't remember their names, but the 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 guy plays a serious role and he's the dude from Dumb and Dumber that's not Jim Carrey. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, um Jeff Daniels. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he plays this detective and so this 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 um He's done a couple serious things. Like he was in newsroom and so he's a yeah. pretty good mm -hmm. actor. So actor. season 1 of The Sinner is it's just like episode 1 and I won't ruin it or anything, but mm -hmm. it, like the show's cool. Watch it. Season 1 of the sinner. Um, it's just like a family, a mom, dad, and their young kid. They're at the beach. And all of a sudden there's this group of like college kids and they're playing music and this song comes on and the mom snaps and it's just, she gets up, stabs a motherfucker like 20 times and kills him right there on the beach. And then she's like arrested and she's like, I don't know what the fuck happened. I blacked out. So it's this cool story past trauma and things like that. And it's just a really interesting show about human psyche and wow. and like um right. ptsd and mm -hmm. um and ret this, retrograde amnesia this song was on it so yeah this was her trigger song oh okay Yikes. something so surprise. maybe before we play it should we move the knife because it sounds no. like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so and then i but so so this so the band is big black delta okay big black delta the song is called hugging and kissing and I, I sampled it for you or, and you guys yep. are like, it's got like an eighties vibe mm -hmm. That's right. type feel to it. I yeah. like, I, I, I should actually share some, I'm really, it's called, or not, not this genre, but like modern day eighties music is really good. And it's the yeah. genre is called synth wave. There's okay. a, there's a group I really like called the midnight. That, yeah. That's the one I was trying to come up with the earlier. Midnight. Right. Yeah. They got, it's just like when you, it's like it, the saw the music is coming out in 2018 and stuff, Yeah, but it's got that like, it's like, it's like from the movie. It's like it was in like running man or something. Yeah. Right. And then they you like the... hit him with the saxophone. Right. Like nobody right. hits him with Nobody's the saxophone, saxophone anymore. anymore. Right. <laughs> Get, hit him with the jazz boy. <laughs> you hit him with the jazz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it sounds like a slapper for sure. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those albums. 
I um I can listen to the whole album it, it, when I'm working out if I'm in that kind of a a funky mood you know sometimes You're when feeling I'm feeling it dude, sometimes when I'm working out like I listen to a lot of metal but if I'm having like an increasingly angry day mm-hmm. I go with like happy tunes you know and this is this is one of those albums <laughs> that can make me feel just Less better angry? like more, well like right. I want to I want to feel more light heart I want when I go and work out, I want to enjoy that workout. Right. And I don't want to be bogged down by like mental mm-hmm. bullshit. And I just want to have fun. I'm just feeling the vibes. Dancing around just your just pillow dance. Yeah, yeah, just dancing around. Sure. Yeah. Just good vibes. <laughs> so that's our slapper. I like big, it. Big Black Delta, hugging and kissing. It's a fucking super catchy beat. You have yeah. to, you have to, you have to. I'm that, not even going to sample intro it. Is rad. Yep. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I think it's going to, it might be. My um, competition entrance song. That's it. We'll see. But it hypes me up. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. some songs that really get me hyped up. Gotta be hyped up. for that. Yeah. And so, and you got a free show recommendation out of it. The Sinner on Netflix. It was really good. I'll check that There's out. There's two seasons. Okay. We watched season one. And then it's one of those shows where it's like, season two is like similar characters, but different roles. And it's like the past story doesn't exist. So I was like, that's kind of weird. Oh, I don't know. Like they started season one is again. great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's got a, um, a really famous actress. But I can't remember her name because I don't remember. Is that, yeah, it's not I really your yeah. thing, mm-hmm. right? I think she's the girl that dated Justin Timberlake, though. I remember. Beal? Yeah, Andrew Jessica yeah. Beal. Jessica, Jessica Beal. Nice Jessica Beal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Mm. I keep track of who <sighs> Justin Timberlake dates. That's the only one. Yeah, yeah, right. I have yeah. a chart. Dude, I like Justin Timberlake's music sometimes. Yeah. One yeah. of those women, either Jessica Beal or Jessica Alba, actually like went to prom or something with Caldwell's brother. Because she grew up in Boulder. Oh, no shit. That's a true story. I mean, it's one of those two. You'd have to ask him which one, but I think it's... Caldwell's brother that I played indoor soccer with? The, the paintball guy, Brendan. Yeah, he's not even the good-looking brother. Like, Sean is a little <laughs> bit... <laughs> more, yeah. That's a nice little bone for you to throw <laughs> yeah. out there, right? Did Caldwell Venmo you some money before this? Yeah. What are we talking about? <laughs> uh, he'll definitely appreciate mm-hmm. that nod. Mm-hmm. I'm um, the good-looking brother. Right. Yeah. I knew it this whole um, time. So, um, getting into it. I'll just start by saying I I rem- my first I remember my first interactions with you. So you so you and I met because we were both in um, the uh, same army platoon there. But when we were in, you were a E four already, and I was just a, a newly private, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I think like and I was like scared to talk to you, not just because you're so, so like if you guys aren't watching this, you you Sean's just like a big barrel chested man. You're like <laughs> six eight six nine, <laughs> right. you know. Right. 250 plus just like yeah. man and like when and then the army days you were just like fucking used to be real fit yeah right. and i, and I do you wouldn't know it from what <laughs> yeah. but i, but but I, I used I was, to really be something folks, i can i can remember yeah. i can still see this we were in the barracks hallway <clears throat> excuse me and i said i was like dude how'd you get your arm so fucking big and you know what you said to me no like oh i used to be fat that's <laughs> true <what> story <laughs> yeah. Yeah. cultivating like, mass oh, i used to be fat <laughs> i was like <laughs> Oh, well, me good, too, but now I'm just a skinny fuck, right, you know. That's the secret, man. <laughs> and then um step 1, get then, back. cultivate mass, then harvest. Yep. Right. And then uh <laughs> one time, one time you and Caldwell let me come work out with you guys at Ritz Epps. I do remember that. And so I remember, yeah, and that yep. was that was kind of um um but I just I just remember that. I was like cuz your arms were so fucking big. I was like, yeah. how'd you get how'd you get those big ass arms? 21 gun salute back yeah. in the day. Right. Fucking massive. He was yeah. just a fucking tank. So, um I, I've known you since the army and um but uh we have to start the story where every story starts like yeah um so let's just get into it like where are you from okay sure man i um so i grew up in a southern like a suburb of denver it used to be called inglewood now it's called centennial and uh it's about 20 minutes south of downtown denver is where i grew up mom still lives in the same house dad passed away two years ago but up until then they they both still lived in the same house that we grew up in right there. Yeah. She's still there. And, um, and, and you got, you got siblings, you got two, it's two brothers, right? That's right. I'm the youngest. Oh, you're the youngest. I'm the youngest of uh, three boys. And, um, my older brother Jay is five years older than me. And my older brother, Chris is seven years older. Okay. Cool. So like, um, and I don't, I don't know, like, um, so like growing up, were you, you know, um, were you an athletic person? Because you, were, how long have no. you fed? How long have you been bigger than everybody? Around no, you? so that's that's a good you know? question. Like, right. I don't know what it's like to be fucking six foot plus. Well, you it's, know? A, it's a you it's never a, will. Yeah. Oh, it's a fair question. Yeah. It's it's really interesting. I, I was not a, an athlete. Uh, I mean, I played athletics growing up, but I was not an athlete. Mm-hmm. My brothers were athletes, and Jay was a incredible athlete. Actually, went to go to 
got to go to college on a, on their dime for that. And so, um, my thing, I mean, I played football, baseball, basketball growing up until I got to like high school, played all three of those things, but I wasn't like a standout. And, uh, in those days, like in the, you know, eighties, fat kids got put on the offensive line. Like that's the only place I could play O line or D line. Yeah. And, um, I wasn't necessarily super aggressive and, uh, I just, I mean, I liked playing sports because that's what you did in my family, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like my passion or anything. And so I got up to high school and I went to a, a pretty big high school in Centennial called Cherry Creek High School. Yeah. And um, those guys are, I mean, it's a student body is like 4,000 kids. Oh, wow. So the teams they field are incredible. Like, yeah. you know, I, I played with world-class athletes who went on to be professional athletes and things like that. And so, I mean, after my freshman year, I was just like, I'm... I'm outclassed here. Yeah, I can't really hang. And I'll never forget like the first, um, the start of my sophomore year, I was still thinking I'd play football. I, I wasn't good enough to play all three sports at that school. And so I went to like a training camp that the mandatory training camp they have. And that was like the first time I'd ever been punched in the mouth by fitness. And it was just like, man, I'm out of my depth. And really? so I quit, I quit sports. Oh and, no shit. Yeah. yeah. Just because like being pushed that hard, I wasn't mentally mature enough yet for yeah. that, you know, and was the fat kid and said, I, ha I thought I had asthma, but I was really just out of shape and I was embarrassed about being out of shape. And so, um, I'd always like, I, I liked sports, I like watching them, but you know, I didn't feel a lot of heartburn for giving, giving sports up. Yeah. And it wasn't until I, I, when I graduated high school, I was 5'10", 280. And oh, just really? a be little beef, little Cartman. Beefer. Yeah. And so, beefcake. Yeah, beefcake, man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, my, we ate well at my house. We ate, we ate good food. Mom made dinner every night. I just like, you know, drank too much soda, had too much candy, didn't yeah. work out. And, um, it wasn't until I got up to, I went to school, uh, undergrad up at CSU in Fort Collins, Colorado state. Mm -hmm. And my freshman year up there, he frosted your tips. Frosted my tips. <laughs> Actually, I bleached my whole head blonde. <laughs> fifth, fifth Element. The movie yeah. The Fifth Element had just yeah. come out, to be but fair. I, just, I, know the, I know the time. Yeah. My yeah, tips are right. frosted. Okay, yeah. so telling yeah. secrets about each other. That's <laughs> the, the tone has been set. So. Uh, so my dorm room was right across from this great athletic center they had there for students. And I was like, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to turn over a new leaf here. I want to, I don't want to be this way forever. I stopped drinking soda and like lost 25 pounds, like in a couple months, yeah. I'd go over and ride the stationary bike at night, lost 25 more pounds. So by the time I got into like my sophomore year of college, this would have been like 98. Um, I'd lost, I mean, between freshman year and like the end of my sophomore year, I lost a hundred pounds. Oh shit. Nice. Went from 280 to 180. You, yeah. And then I, then I grew three inches. So really? then I got, it's like almost like the gravity. So God was rewarded you. Yeah. He's like, yeah. Hey man, you did really good. Right. I'm going to, so, I'm going to get you. You know, that's interesting. Cause I, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't have guessed that yeah. about you in high school there. And cause like, I, I know your, your dad was like, dad was a D one athlete swimmer. Yeah. Mom was and a so swimmer. Athlete just and, yeah. Somehow a little bit let you. Yeah. I mean, that mentality. Cause I had that mentality as a kid or I didn't, I didn't have a work ethic as a that's, teenager, that's you know, when I mean, things got hard, I was like, fuck man, that's hard. And nobody really helped guide me and say, Hey, things get hard. And yeah. that's when you fucking really, that's what separates, you know, just like that, th the things we know now about yeah. the things we learned in the army didn't know in high school, but it, like your dad just didn't, uh, well, I mean, I was into a lot of stuff. I mean, I played piano and I read yeah. and, I, and I and I loved to write. And my grades were good and I liked yeah. school and I was a Boy Scout and I was in Excalibur, which was like a community service club. So I did things. Okay. Yeah. And I think when my parents were like, I'm like, you know, football, I'm like, I just didn't have that competitive edge yeah. like I that I eventually got. And yeah. I sort of like let myself talk myself out of wanting to compete because mm -hmm. I wasn't very good. It's funny how we can do that. Right. right? And I was like, you know yeah. what? <laughs> and like these guys that were my peers that I'd played little league with, they're starting to get into like creatine and lifting and all that stuff. And I just, I guess I just sort of felt like, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of the short, fat, funny kid. That's my vibe. Like that's how I stay relevant to my peer group. And, and I, my parents didn't like sweat me for it. They're like freshman year. I wanted to quit. They're like, you're going to finish this season yeah. and then you're going to see and they made me go to that training camp. And at the end of that camp, I think they could tell that I was just like, not yeah, into it. I don't have it. I, don't yeah. ha I mean, and, and it's funny though. Cause like, as soon as I got up to college and, and lost that weight and started 
getting in touch with fitness, I just like addicted. Like yeah. I just went what, from what kind of working out or fitness. So after I, I mean, after freshman year, I went home for that summer. And when I went back up as a sophomore, um, I moved into my fraternity house and like all those guys were really into fitness and lifting and, and that rec center up at Colorado state was awesome. Yeah. But actually what really lit a fire was like the fall of that sophomore year. Cause I'd always played army growing up. That yeah. was my thing. Like Jay and Chris didn't really care about playing with, toy guns and dressing up in fatigues, but that was my shit. Yeah. Like go out in the woods and pretend do maneuvers. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Put that Charlie Sheen movie on again. Yeah. You know, like, go yeah. out and pick up cigarette yeah. butts right. and really get like the feel for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, this is but, what it's going to be yeah. like. So yeah. like, I'd always loved to play army, but I never, the military was never a reality. Cause I was like this short fat kid. And right. so what happened is I started being like, you know, the military, well, that could actually be a thing now. And I went to the Navy recruiter and I picked up at that time, they had the buds warning order, which was a packet that they would hand out in a folder for like the seal challenge recruitment thing. And it was just a, it was, here's what you should do this week. And it was all like pyramid push ups, pull ups, sit ups, dips, run and swim. And so I did that my sophomore year of college and got to be like, I mean, it was pretty righteous. And all of a sudden I'm like feeling myself because I could go a couple hundred push ups. Yeah. My workout would be like, it'd be like 10 sets of a hundred for sit ups and then Mm. push ups and then like 10 sets of 10 for pull ups and dips. And then I'd swim uh, an 800 or a thousand and then run three or four miles. And I'd do that. And I would do that in like a one out two hour period, Yeah, you know? And, And I, and so then I was like addicted and on it and I started getting into mountain biking and I got back into skiing because I'd kind of moved away from snow skiing because it was I'm trying to keep up with my brothers who are like yeah. bombing down the hill I'm like right, yeah. wait up you guys <laughs> 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 you know, slow down right. oh shit so, that, so then that's when I, that kind of really woke me up and I, I feel like I was just a late bloomer and that's where I was at 18 or 19 I was starting to feel like that young man where it's like I want to push myself and challenge myself and yeah. do those things it just kicked man. in late it just kicked in late man and it was like but that's not even, but I guess that's not that late. late. I mean, not, that's not even but late. I mean, we're, we're sitting, but I guess like we're fu- like, I'm full of shit. Cause I'm like, why didn't you, you're like, you seem the kind of guy who would have been like committed to your sports and been yeah. a good athlete and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, that's kind of an unfair bias. Right. Or assumption, right. You know, uh, every, <laughs> everyone's roadmap is different, man. I will yeah. say like, you know, there's an advantage to team sports. Like if I, cause I play the game. Like we all do. Like if I had to do over again, I would have like wrestled and swam and yeah. ran track because then when I'm graduating high school, I'm ready to go right into a military program yep. and, you know, and excel, but it's a mental thing too. I, did, I mean, I didn't join the army until I was 23 and it made it easier. Like it made the whole experience easier being an older guy. Yeah. yeah. Even though you're probably well, a little better off as don't going through younger when your body can take that kind of yeah. shit. But. Yeah. So, um, so you went to a, what was your, you were a criminal justice major so and you finished that degree i did so you did your four years in college oh five five okay uh, gentle, or, <laughs> yeah. gentleman's five you know getting, uh, let's, let's not get a, let's not get ahead of ourselves here it's a gentleman's five um, it's like the baker's dozen that's it i wanted, wanted yeah. to take my time wanted, to make, wanted to make sure yeah. i really like, fucking understood it's the everything greatest time in your life like slow down and right. appreciate it dude. Yeah. enjoy yourself right right yeah so, um, you did you did the frat the, f- the fraternity, the frat thing. fraternity yeah. thing, uh, which was really great. I mean, I didn't have the intention to do that, but it's, you do that. Uh, it's so it's been cool to watch over the years. I didn't, um, obviously, I didn't, I've didn't have that experience. Um, you guys are still fucking connected. It's like a we fraternity are. is like yeah. a social club, social network, and you yeah. guys just have that for the rest of your life. Like I mean, you're still really good friends with some of the guys. With some, yeah. yeah. And I mean, experiences may vary and don't get me yeah. wrong. Like fraternity behavior, there's a reason it's stereotyped and like people yeah. look down on it and there are some, it's one size is not fits all. Right. And so yeah. when I went up to, when I was a wet behind the ears freshman at CSU, I had great role models at home. Like my brothers, Jay and Chris, like great men shaped my father, incredible man, my mother, incredible woman. Yeah. And so when I left that kind of nest and went up to Fort Collins, um, I could have very easily fallen in with different kinds of people. I was very impressionable. Yeah. And, you know, that's a pivotal time in your life when it can kind of set the tone for who you're going to be. Yeah. And I found this, I did not, I just went to all the rush stuff cause like it was a place to go drink and talk to girls, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I ended up finding this, this house, uh, Sigma Nu Delta Row chapter in CSU and, and talk with some of the guys and that the vibe there was just like different. Like they're like, we like to play athletics we like to 
of course we like the brotherhood and we like to have a good time and party, but like, it just felt like those guys had really good heads on their shoulders. Yeah. They came from good families. They had good backgrounds. Sure. And so, um, I did, I, I got, and thankfully I, those guys really helped for that next chapter. You know, my brothers got me to 17, 18, and then those guys in Sigma Nu got yeah. me from 18 to 20 something. And I wonder if you were able to spot that because you grew up around it. Cause I think pick, who you pick is to, to be around super important. It's a really good call out for sure. Owen. And like, uh, it was also like, I probably didn't fit the mold for like fraternity. Like I was, again, I was still just this little baby faced fat freshman kid. Right. And so they picked me too. And they right. saw something in me where they're like, this guy seems like a quality dude yep. and didn't like care that I wasn't like, you know, frat guy, face guy, you know, right. kind of Ken doll thing. Yeah. But, uh, it, it worked out great. And, um, you know, it wasn't, there were some bumps along the road there too. We ended up, uh, losing our charter and, and they kicked us out of the house and kicked that fraternity off campus. But for like, for not paying our bills, not for like, <laughs> You know, yeah. raping people or whatever, yeah. or yeah. killing yeah. pledges, That's or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. Some right. of those things you associate. So, on the scheme of things, I'm yeah. like, if we didn't pay our rent, okay, like that's a that's a blemish I can live with on right. the record. You know, other yeah. fraternities were getting kicked off for date rape and and shit like that. So, yeah, garbage. Yeah. Yep. So, but you're right. It was a. I was fortunate to find. I'm still in touch with a lot of those dudes, and and um, yeah, you know, it's fun to be in the next chapter of our lives together. What um, what did uh, what did your parents? What did your parents do for work growing up? Because I know, like, your dad was, like, he was a pretty well-esteemed guy. Yeah. And, like, so what, what did your parents do growing up? My dad went to University of Denver, which is a really uh, highly regarded school, um, private school in Denver. And he uh, he was he was trying to please his parents by becoming an engineer. Mm-hmm. So he had all these math classes and credits. And, by like, right before he graduated, as the story goes, he um, was like, I don't want to be an engineer goes into his counselor. He's like, what can I be? I'm like, well, you could be a math teacher. And so he's like, I'll be a math teacher. Yeah. And I, his first job at uh, Littleton High School, I think, um, they needed like a tennis coach. And he's like, I can teach tennis. I'm a tennis coach. Yeah. And they're like, and all he had done uh, was like taking tennis as an like elective. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Heckles on friends. Like, right. Well, that's not, that's my parrot. You don't have a parrot. I could have a parrot. Could have a parrot. <laughs> I could have a parrot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I could, I could be a tennis like coach. Like dad had taken tennis as like a gym elective in yeah. college. So he's yeah. like, I can coach tennis. And he got his foot in the door there, became a math teacher, eventually would go on to get his master's and his doctorate mm-hmm. in math. Yeah. Um, and moved over to Cherry Creek High School where he taught for 20 He would have been a hoot, man. Like, I, I, knew, I knew your dad and, yeah. like, oh, my God. I just, like, one of my favorite memories. I'm just going to, like, we're please do. Yeah. It was at your wedding. It was at your wedding. Um, uh, dad's name is Glenn. Mm-hmm. Glenn's sitting down. He's looking for something in his pockets. Okay. And he's just pulling shit out of his pockets and, whoop, boom, pulls out a little tiny pistol. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> that? And so there, he's just like, has that shit in his pocket? Dad was like, dropped like, up uh, at all times. Gum, chapstick. <laughs> yeah. right. Here's a quarter, two nickels, a dollar. Whoop, there's my gun. There's my gun. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just fucking, it was just, you know. And, and I looked at him and he just like gave me that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That smirk, like, right. what's up, little baby ass bitch? You know, like he's just so old. You know, he's just like, yeah, yeah. I man. He was just, a, yeah. he was just a, a a man's man, a guy's guy, but like a really kind guy's guy. You know, is is that's an interesting take. I mean, kind is a oh sure. Yeah. Oh, I got Glenn. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. But uh, yeah, I got yeah. We uh, uh, but um. So dad was a renaissance man. Like he yeah. did. Like again, he was like he's collegiate swimmer. Wanted to go to West Point, couldn't get an appointment because of his eyes, um, okay. you know, fell into this career, uh, had opportunity to go try other things because of his education, but he loved to teach and like Colorado State Teacher of the Year finalist in 1988 teaching math. Like who likes math in high right, school, right? right? Yeah. And um, always a student favorite uh, and just getting up and guy never took a sick day and go, you know, going to class, being there at 6.30 or 7 in the morning for first bell and coming home at 3. And then his side gig my dad in like 1950 got his private pilot's license 50 or 60 Um, and so he taught ground school and he wrote publications about private aviation and he was published in magazines and uh, at some point he became a designated flight examiner for the faa so if you take if you're learning to fly he's you have to take a check ride with someone like him to get your license to say that you're Mm. righteous to fly these planes and so that was his side hustle so in the summertime when he's off work from school, yeah. he's teaching, he's giving check rides and 
that's how he helped support the family. He played piano. He could, and he didn't read sheet music. He would just play it by ear, yeah. ragtime, and yeah, it was uh, fun watching him play the piano. So he's just like yeah. you know, he's a true Renaissance yeah. type guy, and and also like as he got older too, like a character. Yeah. So you know, he <laughs> wasn't everyone's cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> My mom is the kind one for sure. Like mom okay, is lo- yeah. everyone loves. Him. She's like your mom, right? You know, yeah. Everyone loves Deanna. And, and um, did she work? Mom was a kindergarten. Mom went to University of Northern Colorado and got her degree in education, which UNC churns out amazing teachers. Um, both my cousin uh, went up there as well, and so mom taught kindergarten first grade, and did so. Man, right now that we have kids, it's like when I meet when I meet people, and I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm a teacher, and yeah. I'm like, oh, what, why, Whoa, right. holy shit, you know, you just and like if you, I guess if a teacher has kids, you're fucking dealing with kids all day, all day, and, and then you go mm-hmm. home and deal with your kids, and your kids, like, holy yeah. fuck. But I'll tell but you, I mean, but like, but so it, so that that's one of those things where it's like I can't understand doing that kind of job or like what are these how how do these people have so much love and care and compassion it's a calling man like, it's, yeah you know it's <laughs> yeah. you're called to do it yeah mm-hmm. and so she taught um when she had my brother she would like you know go part-time or sub and then when she had um me and had three boys you know yeah. all with it then finally they made the decision for her to be a stay well, that away just a little bit yep. yep finally made the decision for her to be a stay-at-home full-time mom oh, okay yeah and so but i mean like yeah that's the reason she's a big part of why because dad i mean dad went and worked and yeah. dad was involved but mom was there teaching us to read and sound things out and yeah. count and all of multiplication tables and all those things. That's so. legit because you're um, you're one of my most well spoke or like you're so good at writing. Yeah, you're one thanks, of, like man. one of my friends that is like just the best at writing. So um, if uh, yeah, can we hire you to do? To <laughs> yeah, because like, hey, I keep I keep a, getting shut down on my Instagram ads. Right, I need a writer. Right. Like I, I don't I know copy. I don't know what to say instead of fuck. You know, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. yeah. what's yeah. another uh, word for uh, fuck? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah. as I as I moved into my professional career, it was like you know you do have I I mentor as you do like veterans and talk to them I'm like hey man you're gonna have to be able to get through a sentence without yeah. dropping an F bomb if you yeah. want to work. And it's like, Hey, what's a thesaurus trying to look up pussy in the thesaurus, you know, like what's a different word for fucking pussy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. These are new skills. Yeah. <laughs> new skills. Um, all right, cool. So, um, so yeah, that's, that, that, that's cool, man. Um, and doing the college thing. So, um, what year did you graduate college? Uh, I graduated college in 2002, in the spring okay. of 2002. So what was your, so you, you, you so obviously did, you went the army route, but what was your plan in college? Like, yeah. what did you want to go do? Were you that's trying a, to? It's a great question. The part of the reason I went to Colorado state was they had a, they have one of the best, if not the best veterinary medicine programs in the U S and I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. I oh, still yeah, up, you do like animals. I do. Yeah. I still yeah. ended up being a vet, but not a veterinarian. Right. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, be what kind there. of what yeah, kind I mean, of veterinarian <laughs> like like uh, livestock and no man I, I mean I, so you know as a little kid I loved animals and you know in high school uh, I think around like sophomore junior year I'm telling my parents kind of thinking about what I want to do and just a small animal vet okay and so I got it then my parents were like as soon as you can drive yourself to work you can get a job I got a job at a vet clinic by my high school I worked there for a couple years after school and weekends and summers and stuff and got to know the doctors over there. And so I went up to CSU fully intentioned to do like four years of pre-vet biology and then four years of vet school. And it was about my second year when it, when I realized that that's hard. Yeah. (laughs) It's really hard. Like you can't like half ass your way through OCHEM and, you know, gross anatomy and 300 level, 400 level biology classes. And, and then the more I found out about what being a veterinarian actually entails and how, you know, you come out struggling to make money and you've got the same student loan debt as like an MD. Yeah. It's and an interesting crossroads when, when you have like where, where you envision a job taking you and you realizing what the day-to-day tasks are yeah. of that life. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, and this ta- is not what I thought. Talking to veterinarians, they're like, why do you want to be a vet? And I'm like, cause I love animals. And they're like, that is such a small part of this job. <laughs> yeah. They're How like, are you going to make money? Animals? Right. Uh, get a barn. They're right. Like, they're like, get some land they're like and, so yeah. keep in mind like that love, you have that love in your heart when you put them down when they die on you, yeah. when you have to deal with crazy owners who are screaming at you, when people abandon their pets, like it is an, it is a, and some of them, one of our dear friends is also our, our veterinarian. She, I mean, it's, it's a heavy thing to, 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 to bear. Oh yeah. And so I switched to criminal justice. Um, at that point, like halfway through college, I was like, military is what I want to do. My parents were like, do us a favor and just 
finish your on just finish your degree. We don't care what yeah, it's okay, in. But so so nine eleven happened. That's right. And you did you get that itch I to did. go and like, so your parents were like, finish your fucking They degree, called man. me and they're like where are you right now? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm at the recruiters. Yeah, right. Just signed those. I just signed right, some right. papers, Bob. I'm yeah. on a bus. Eleven X-ray. That means uncommitted. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no bonus. I waived it because they, yeah. they could send me now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that um, I think my parents thought that the military thing was a phase. Like they knew how they saw me changing my body and working out really hard and being mm -hmm. devoted to this and. You know, the peacetime military, like, it's cool to think about being a SEAL or a Green Beret or a Ranger. And then after 9-11, you're like, well, now I'm joining, be joining to go to war. Yeah. Game changed. And so I think they thought maybe, and I still had a year left of school, so they're like, just stay. And I think maybe the thought was that year would cool my jets. And and um, so I finished, and... Um, in 02 and was kind of, and I, I didn't know what, I was like, I had this criminal justice degree, but, and, a, and I was like, what am I going to do with this? Like, and I was like, maybe aspirations to be a fed or something like that. Yeah. But you still kind of needed the military experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I was just, I took a little time. I worked at a bar. I coasted. I had a good time. And, um, at the end of like that summer, I, uh, took my parents to dinner and was like, listen, you guys have been great supporters of me. Is everything okay? No, you're okay. good. You guys have been great supporters of me, and I appreciate you keeping me in school, and I, I feel like I did that for you, and now I'm going to do this for me, and yeah. I expect you guys to be on board with that. And to their credit, they they were. Yeah, that's cool. So you joined so. up. Um, so, yeah, so, um, so you joined the Army, and you went um, – you went the, uh, oh, bo oh See? Yeah, you don't know God that damn trip. it, dude. He's just like, he's just the guy that makes me feel like an inferior man. <laughs> it's impressive. To, to be honest, like, I have done that twice. Yeah. Quietly and slowly did in the privacy of my own room. Because <laughs> I've seen you do that before. I'm like, how did that motherfucker? If you guys aren't watching, Sean just fucking opened a goddamn bottle of beer with his fucking wedding ring. That's like right. it was nothing. Yeah. 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 That's the second best thing about having a wedding I, ring. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it on my next beer. Watch there you me. go. We'll see. <laughs> no we'll pressure. See. That like, goal. Derek, what are you trying to do? Take a poop over there? <laughs> like, no, I'm going to fucking open this box. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, join in. You went the, uh, you went the special forces route. I did. It was, a, there was a newer contract that was called the 18 x-ray contract yeah. and it guaranteed you a chance yeah. at special forces selection. You had to do your primary MOS was 11 Bravo mm -hmm. and you got, you got in, infantry basic and AIT you got airborne school. Then you went to a prep course, uh, a four week prep course called SOPSI, Special Operations Preparation Conditioning at Bragg. Mm -hmm. Then you got a selection date. Then you did SOPSI two, and then you were in the pipeline like any other special forces recruit. Okay. And then what is it, was that new? Cause like it used to be, you couldn't join under the age of 24 or 25. That's like right. That. And you must've been like 23. 23. When you joined? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Um, so th that was kind of like the new rule cause they needed bodies or something. They dropped that age requirement. Yeah. I think they, I mean, just like the seal challenge, like the 18 x-ray, it's a recruiting tool, yeah. you know, and they, they're counting on people not making it and then going needs of the army and all that stuff. And infantry being your primary, you're going to an infantry unit. Yeah. Oh, those fucking sneaky bastards. But yeah. it's also like, all we need is a hundred infantrymen this month. Right. How do we do it? Hey boys, right. guess you want to be a Green Beret? <laughs> right. And all they need is the fucking uncommitted infantrymen. Yep. Right. Oh man, That's right. dirty. Uh, but it also dirty recruiters. <laughs> to your to your point, like it, to join SF, and that you had to have been in the army, be an E five, be yeah. be yeah. older, wiser, smarter. Uh, and this one, there were some caveats. Like you had to be. I think you had to be. It helped if you had some college. You didn't have to have a four-year degree, but it helped. Because yeah. you, you got to come in at an E4. As an right? E4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, like, rightfully so. Like, it was so cool. Like, so, it, you know, I was a fucking E2 when I met you. Mm -hmm. And you can, it was just, it was just interesting. Because, like, there'd be, like, 20-year-old E4s. Yeah. But you were 23, 24. Mm -hmm. And you just com had a... a it's weird when you're an 18, 19 year old soldier and you see these guys and they're 24, 25 and you're like, that is a mature, fully grown ass right. man who has all his shit handled. That's right. But like looking back, <laughs> like, oh fuck. But Guess it was, what? it was, but you were just, you had this, like you had that commanding presence. Like here's a guy and he went to school. That was a cool thing. You, you go to college. I mean, I think that's a great route for people who want to join yeah. the military. It's like, hey, man, like, this is America. There will always be a fight somewhere. Like, going to college is just, like, it, in a weird way, it makes you a better soldier. You had you had a lot of life experience before you joined the Army. I didn't Definitely. have any life experience. Yeah. I just came fresh out of high school, you know. Um, yeah, so... Um, 
Uh, so you go to basic training. Yeah. How so was that? Is anything fun happen? It was or great, dude. Like, I, I yeah. got to tell you, like, um, coming in, uh, coming in 23, like fantastic shape, wanted to be there. I like basic and AIT and airborne school were like some of the most fun times in my life. Yeah. And like I show up in the fall. Like was I, it easier uh, than you thought it would be? It was, I mean, basic and AIT were easy. Yeah. And even airborne school was pretty easy. Yeah. Um, you airborne had, school was really easy because you, had like your, the, you get weekends you off. You weekends yeah. off. And, and like, go do whatever like, you want. And yeah. the runs are like these slow runs. Yeah. Man, yep. Like 10 minute mile runs. I'm like, okay, that this is great. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I tried to sham out one morning in, in airborne school because it's like, or of course it, it was either like basic or... <laughs> it, it, it was either like it was somewhere in there because I did basic AIT and airborne school and they, they put you in those run groups, you know, yeah, right, and there's right. like ABCD and my fucking run times were uh, fat. You've always right. been fast. Yeah. yeah. Group, and like, Until I but, die. One, but dude, one morning I had to fucking shit so bad that I just like, but you can't just go right. shit when you want to shit. So I had to shit so bad. I fucking snuck my ass over in D group. Cause I didn't want to haul ass in a group and like I, we started the run and the guy, whatever cadre was leading yeah. D group, he, he knew who I was. He was like, what the fuck are you doing here? And I got in trouble and stuff and, uh, <laughs> and that didn't go over well, but I only tried to join that group cause I had to poop that morning. He's like, you don't like, that's a weird thing. Like I just like, I can't go sprint right now. Right. Cause I got, right. I'm going to fucking shit my pants. You yeah. Know? But it was weird for me. I dude, I, um, I got out of shape in basic training and, and that stuff is like, I, it wasn't as hard as I, well, so like for us, they, they put all the 18 x-ray and 11 x-ray rip guys into the same platoon. Oh really? So we were first platoon B co one nineteen, and all of us were these dudes who I didn't just, we didn't join to be infantry guys. We were going to be these other things. Really? So like at night we would be the ones who are voluntarily doing PT in the Bay. We're doing extra runs around the, they would let us go do runs. I mean, after, after total control and yeah. stuff, but so, I mean, and like waiting in line for chow, doing the pull-ups where you didn't have to do them, but we would all do them. So yeah. we, I, and I was around some of the dudes that are still to this day, like I would consider some of my best friends and have gone on to have incredible careers in um, both group and beyond, beyond group, you know, yeah. doing some real greasy shit. Um, but it was great. It was a great Ooh, group of dudes. I like so, that word. Yeah. Greasy oh, shit. Yeah, a little greasy secret shit. squirrel. All right. So, yeah. so it was great. So that, I mean, but it was fun. Like we wanted to be there. So there yeah. really wasn't anything they could do to like, upset us like you're gonna see you're gonna not yeah. sleep great you were, you were gonna, one of those really motivated yeah. guys yeah I think, yeah i was too and i was like one of those annoyingly motivated right fucking guys and because know? like we were a bunch of us were college dudes like they had that we had to spec for mafia early on and and we you were an e4 in basic yeah well i mean when they give yeah. you rank you know whatever yeah. that is second sure third phase but yeah. um and so i just thought it was a, i mean it was thought it was a breeze you know to be honest and then yeah. um airborne school like you said you know they, they ran they graduated us in our at class a's and the hot dog hats which uh, that would have been the spring of oh four and then ran us in those dress shoes up to our airborne training company which was funny so you graduated spring so i okay so i you, think i graduated like february of end of february 2004 that's when you graduated uh airborne basic oh basic okay and then they ran us up to airborne school. okay cool Course. okay so, so basically I, jo March. I joined june 20th 2004 that's when yeah. i reported to basic yeah yep. okay cool so yeah yeah so ran us up to Airborne, had some great I mean, Airborne weekends, dude, driving oh, down yeah. to Panama City. And yeah. we were, uh, Johnny Kim was actually at Airborne school with me, that SEAL astronaut dude. Yeah. Uh, oh, no shit. No shit. No shit. Like I, like I, we hung out, like we had beers and hmm. we went down to the rec center one night to swim and he's in there with some of those guys like pulling laps. And I was like, hey, how's my side stroke look? And so those guys were, were super <laughs> nice guys. Like those are really, looks really like cool. shit. Yeah, you're nerd. an idiot, nerd. Yeah, you'll never <laughs> be a fucking SEAL right. astronaut with that fucking stroke. Uh, <laughs> and so, so. <laughs> it was cool man and like we, we drove to panama city and raged with those guys and then came back up and that was jump week and we pull into we pull into the barracks late on sunday night like early monday morning we get up and i am still drunk and so is some of the guys in my stick and we have to run to the harness shat you know place to yeah. get harness. and so my buddy and i are eating toothpaste so they don't catch it on our breath and stuff and i could was so relieved to get out of that airplane because i'd just been sweating and like sick and yeah, just, just wishing i was dead yeah. all day that's funny. Why so. did I do I this? Did, right. uh, that's funny. I was I wasn't at a dude. I wasn't at a. Uh, I turned twenty one in um, December oh six, and then I got deployed January. So like I like I yeah I kind of like yeah going to basic and airborne school, and you went to you went to basic twice. Owen. I went twice. I went so once when I was eighteen, and then I went once again when I was thirty. 
<laughs> Did they make you go through basic again? Because yeah. you've been out, you've been out long enough. So it was an option because the the at the time it was 2009 when I went back in, and there were so many prior service guys because the economy just took a shit, yeah. and so people were like, "Fuck it, I'm going back in the military." Right. There were so many of those people that I would have had to wait like eight months to get a date, and the guy the guy at Meps was like, "I tell you what, if you're willing to do like actual basic training all over again, you can leave next week," and I'm like. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's go. It so was how'd they, so funny. Did you get to keep your old rank or anything like that? Or? I No, I had to come back in as an E4, and then I was supposed to get my rank back right when I got my unit, and then mm-hmm. kind of messed up paperwork, and it took longer. But Because somebody's, I've heard the stories where, like, somebody went through basic with a dude that like, had a ranger tab and was an E5. Oh, yeah. And the cadre is just like, <clears throat> go hang out in the office or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. we know you have to be here, but yeah. we're not yep. going to mess with you or whatever. Yeah, yeah when they yeah, when I, I the made sure... fucking thing. The right. whole thing. Uh, yeah. I missed the, the shark attack, like, after the... When you're getting off the buses, yeah. I kind of came strolling up when I had my Class A's over my shoulder and the drill sergeants are like, who the fuck is that? Oh, it's really? like, I'm your only prior service guy, apparently. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. That, that, that shark attack shit was funny. It was yeah. hilarious. <laughs> yeah. When you go and realize, like like what you were saying, kind of being older, like yeah. when you realize that just there's going to be games. And yeah, you're just, like, this is like, this is a process. It's a process that works uh, for hundreds of years. It's like, funny. just uh, just follow the process. Yep. Like, don't take it personal. Just, yep. I love it. I, yeah. love, I love that shit. And like being, like being in that shape, like pull-ups was how they scared people. Right. We were like, we could do 20 unbroken. I, I got a real case like of the used to these days. Right? <laughs> yeah. Used to be able to do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, uh, quick, uh, deviation. What is, what, uh, I'm going to try this. You yeah. fucking, we went to the, sh- uh, you and I went, hit the grocery store yesterday cause I needed a beer and you were looking for these high noon mm-hmm. sun sips, high noons, sun sips, no shame in my game, sun man. Sips. That's I, right. I drink claws, but this yeah. is a, uh, this is a vodka and soda, black cherry made with real juice. These are good. They're good. And so like white claw, I mean, I, I no laws when you're drinking claws. I get it. But I had, I've been having to use white claws as mixers because they're, they're just like a malted seltzer. There's no, I don't feel any booze. Yeah. yeah. These are actual vodka sodas. So a couple Some of those, good. yeah, a couple of those you'll feel it. And so that, that's actual vodka. Mm-hmm. And it tastes better. Like I don't, I don't think the malted beverage in this, in the seltzers turns people off. Yeah. I don't um, like that, that aftertaste. That's right. Like you malt. won't get that with these. That's good. Pretty good. That's right. Really good. Yeah. yeah. We'll see how it works. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> right. if, we'll I, if I give you this, right. it's working. Yeah. If I start a little but, winky, get like some dirt, coffee yeah. going. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So uh, cool. Um, and then you um, you go to uh, you must uh, you're done with airborne school. You go to Sopsy. Yep. So they what, come what out. What was that like? Sopsy was the first real one in the in first time in the military where I'm like, yes, this is a challenge. Like, yeah. I mean, so they put us on the bus and Benning drove us up to Bragg. And uh, again, I'm, by this time, I've been with these same dudes for four months, you know, and mm-hmm. we're like thick as thieves. And so we roll off the bus and eight, at that point. Oh, you get to go to like the same class with these guys. Yeah. So they were like my, that. they legit. were my sopsy class. Fucking, yeah. yeah. And so the, at that point, remember Pike Field where we would run with the big 82nd Airborne sign? Yeah. Cause that was right by the, the Kulikon show. That's where I would go down. Yeah, I'd run there. And too, there's those yeah. at the time. There were those World War II barracks there. Yeah, yeah. that was mm-hmm. Sop C when yeah. I showed up. That's like the end of our dens there. Right, right, yeah, right, mm-hmm. yeah. And so, and I mean, these barracks were built for World War II, and we're still there. There's a big bay. But no, no, they're not the big barracks. They're like fucking huts. They dude. look like, and like, like I think the like insulation made out of wood. Yeah, I think yeah. for insulation they use pine needles. Oh yeah. wow! And so one time to prove yeah. a point, they lit one on fire just to be like, "Don't smoke in here," and it burned to the ground in like two <laughs> minutes, like just the chimney left. <laughs> yeah. it's like like, it, like one of those cartoons where it's all <laughs> and like it's just like smoke and brick sitting. Well, there. we're not gonna fucking smoke in there. Right, yeah, and so it. and like they they had they took chicken wire and black plastic and fenced off all around it and just mm-hmm. made it like this little s- compound mm-hmm. where they could torture. Us. What do they do? What do they do in Sopsy? Is it just to like fucking smoke you? It's good training. It's good training, but it, the first the first Sopsy is there to weed out. Yeah. It's there to get the it's dead to weight weed out by smoke and that's right. stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, you're, it's you're being you're being uh, your cadre are like these dudes that we had just read about in books, mm-hmm. like guys from Triple Nickel yeah. that had been on the invasion of Afghanistan and like bron- m- multiple Bronze Stars with V's, and yeah. so now they're like they're doing their swick time and they're teaching Sopsy. So. Like the runs, you know, we're used to like the the A group at, at Benning doing like a six and a half or seven minute mile and shit, dude. These guys are like gazelles and they are big, huge dudes. They're it, and they really? can and like they just take off sprinting because psychologically 
Yeah. So many people give up in that first mile. They're yeah. like, I can't keep There's this. There's no way I right. can keep this. I can't pace. hang with these dudes. Yeah. And I was a, I mean, I was, I was a strong guy and I, my advantage was I could move as fast with a rucksack on as I could without. Yeah. One. You, yeah. So at this point you're like, what, six, three. I'm like, I'm six, one. I'm a six, one guy, okay. but I was, two, I was two ten, two fifteen, And like, I was a max out pushups, pull-ups, pull, uh, and sit-ups. And I'd be like a seven minute mile, six forty five mile guy for the two. That's like, legit. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so like, 13 that's minute, athlete. two mile yeah. kind of thing. And, um, and so Sopsy, yeah, they, we showed up on like a Friday. They gave us the weekend off and Monday you start roll around in the sand. Yeah. yeah. And they had like, you know, they had the gig pit and, and, uh, the runs were up in area J and up to the dump and around all, all around the red clay sand. That's and, the Kula Khan show. Yeah, I think that it yeah. was called like, cause you run up that hill and then you can see the dump on the other side. Yeah. I fucking, that's what I like. So I would either, I would either run there or drive there. I ran that hill several times a week. I yeah. fucking love that. And they'd, they'd put hill. you in the yeah. creek coming back and have you doing PT while the big army units are running by. And like, you feel cool. Like you're like, you yeah. feel like, oh, yeah. you feel like a weirdo. Like everyone's looking like, who are these guys in the creek doing this stupid shit? And, um, and it's, and so the first two weeks, real smoke sesh, but you're also getting like land nav training. They're teaching mm -hmm. you pace and drift and orientation and inclination, declination on the map and all that stuff. And, you know, they play the, the games and stuff and, and they're breaking you down, but you're also like, you kind of feel for the first time, like you're in this special thing where we're wearing slick BDUs with no name and, and we're in this little compound and with our prison stripes on our BDUs and stuff. Did and they treat, was it like uh was it like a big boy rules fucking place or were they treating you like, they didn't like really have training? to, they yeah. really didn't have to yell at you. Yeah. Like you, people that quit. Oh, there was, so like the casualty there, they, they don't yell. It's just Not like, really. Hey, front, yeah. back. And they had a big, hey, you know, you know, you're fucked up. They right? didn't have the buds bell, but they had this big gong. Oh, <laughs> <And yeah. so laughs> like you would, if you wanted to quit, you had to get up in front of the class and ring the gong and say yeah. you quit. And then they would let you go and off you go. And, mm -hmm. um, I saw some dudes that I was surprised quit, quit, you know, there and fall out on runs and stuff. And, uh, but also again, if you wanted to be there, there was no better place for you to be because right. you're like this. I finally feel like after four months of just general kind of BS, I'm actually now pursuing my, my dream here. Right. And, yeah. um, and it was like one, the best part was after the morning PT and all that and actually being out in the woods and learning how to land nav, like you're, no one's hassling you and you're just out there cruising. You know? Yeah. So I fucking loved land nav, dude. I did too. Fucking, too. I, I, I miss that shit. And I, I couldn't do it or like, it'd be like riding a bike. I, but I still have my, um, like my, uh, wet weather bag with like my map mm -hmm. of like the McCall area yeah. and protractor and all that stuff. Cause I used to just practice land nav, yeah. you know, and I was pretty, I was really proficient. I, it's weird. Cause like now I, um. We just have these GPS yeah, this phones. Your phone. Mm -hmm. Like, we used to run that shit in the woods, in the dark, on a fucking compass. Right. Which is like, wow, I can't believe, I can't believe we did that. I know, We man. had that fucking skill set. Yeah. You know, and I could do it. We could learn it again. Or it's just a, yeah, it was cool. We I get to teach your boys I'm just, I'm just being nostalgic. I miss it. I, I that, was, like, that was a lot of that, fun. That's the yeah. kind of stuff that you, you know, I talk to people about the military and I'm like, leaving the military is sort of like getting out of a bad relationship in a sense, because all you end up remembering is the good stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. You forget the times that maybe there were some bad things. Yeah. But you just like, all you remember is like the stuff that you love. Yeah. That's so funny. So when I went back in, all those things that I hated started trickling back in. I'm yeah. like, Oh fuck. Now I remember. Forgot this about CQ. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally forgot about CQ. Ah, fire watch. Fire yeah. guard. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Go. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Bring it. Um, <laughs> All right, cool. So you, you, you finished Sopsy then. No, actually. No. So so I was a squad leader. And again, Sopsy was an area where I started to feel like I was standing out. Like I was really excelling. Like we would we did our first big ruck run. And I think I was like the second guy back in the corral because I could airborne shuffle with a ruck on as fast as I most guys could run. So yeah. I would run the uphills and the straight. I would run the downhills and straightaways and then kind of airborne shuffle the uphills and just crushed it. And um I, we were getting into like our fourth week of training at Sob C. We're at the end of that. How long is that? It's four weeks. Four, okay. So you're yeah, about so to the, at the end. And yeah. the first two are like the crushers and then it yeah. kind of gets more into like, they're actually getting you ready for selection. Building. Right. Time. Yeah. Right. Okay. You're, yeah. You're running. Weed out. out. That's right. Build. Yeah. That's okay. right. And so I'd been put in a leadership position. My cadre was, uh, Michael Murray. I'll never forget. This dude was an incredible leader. And, and, uh, so we had done land nav exercises until late on like a Thursday night and Friday morning we had a timed run back up to the dump, mm -hmm. um, five miles in 40 minutes or less in utilities and shoes. So BDUs and shoes. I had put up, I'd hung up my uniform the night before 
sl- drank some water, took an oral rehydration salt, didn't eat. Mm. The next morning, threw on my wet BDUs. And Did you not eat because just, it wasn't available? Or you no, just I just did, forgot. Yeah. And like, you know, I wasn't as, that's like the detriment there was I was sort of blinded by how fit I was that I didn't like take those kinds of things seriously. Oh, I, had, I grew up in I'm Colorado where there is no humidity. Yeah. And I trained at altitude. So, I mean, me running and bending and brag, I was just like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I wasn't <laughs> as fast, but I was always doing yeah. okay. And so uh, I just think I kind of took my nutrition for granted. And so that run, we make it all the way up. I sound off my uh, roster number. I run back down. I'm crossing that bridge to come back up the rock yeah. into like the area mm-hmm. and be done mm-hmm. plenty of time. And I wake up in an ambulance, like in the oh, me- in the no shit. shit. It happened and in Sopsy. Okay, so I had yeah. two heat strokes. So that yeah. Sopsy one, I I go down. They throw me on the truck. They take me to the shed. Uh, my core temp was like 106, um, and they give me the ice water enemas and all that. And like the the, the disadvantage of did you go to Womac? Did they take you to Womac or no? Yeah, yeah, went to Womac and and like the disadvantage of having a of being in that training is they push you so hard that you can have a heat stroke. The good news is you're surrounded by 18 deltas who are just like, save your life. Like yeah. no problem. Mm-hmm. So Scott Zastro, who's like a famous 18 Delta in the community saved my ass. I think twice on both heat strokes. Oh. And so, <laughs> so anyway, they, um, they were going to, if you have a full-time profile, you can't stay in SOP C. Yeah. And Sergeant Murray comes into first Sergeant's office and he's like, this is a good dude. We should, we need to hang on to this guy while his three month profile clears and recycle him. So he vouched for me and I stayed and, okay, cool. and they put me, they assigned me like a job in the equipment locker or something, okay. you know? And so my buddies who I'd come up with, they finish SOP C, they go to the 24 day selection. I'm working in this med shed kind of thing. They come back and I, and they've passed mm-hmm. and I'm like, Hey, let's go, you know, we'll go celebrate. So I drive and we go out into, into Fayetteville and they get all tuned up. I had some drinks, but mm-hmm. I wasn't drunk. And, I'm coming back through the gate and um, they, they have open containers. So even though I didn't get a DUI, I got an alcohol violation. Oh, no shit. And it's zero tolerance. Like they can't hide you from an alcohol violation because it goes up to the post blotter and the, the commanding general gives you a, you know, like a yeah. G- Gomer or whatever. Yeah. And so that, so they, they're like, Hey, you have to, you got to go needs of the army. So I go to the. Really? Repl- that's what fucking. That's the what, alcohol no violation shit. is what sent me to the. Oh so no shit. Yeah. And I felt bad. So like, I didn't, it didn't do de- yeah. I didn't drink and drive. Dude, I, I got some DUI. fucking bullshit. I got, I got a couple stories like that. Yeah. Where I just like had some dumb legal shit happen to me when I was doing the right thing. Right. Yeah. And I, I picked a, I fucking picked Dieter up. <laughs> One goddamn Dieter. Dieter. Yeah. Dieter, Dieter was drunk in town and I, on my way to get him, I was, I was doing the right thing, but I got nabbed and I got some stupid fucking tickets and just along. Yeah. That's yeah. weird how that shit happens. And yeah. so they send me down the road and like, I'm devastated because the whole time you're at stop C they're saying, Hey, if you can't hang, if you can't hack it, go down to the 82nd, like they'll take you. And that like, was the rhetoric. There. Yeah, yeah. So you looked at them as like lesser than, or like, mm-hmm. this is where I'm going to get killed. Cause these guys don't know what they're doing. And right. Like, yeah. And I show up to the recruitment, the replacement depot and, uh, they take me down to second three, two, five. And Brandon Woolley is the first guy. He checks me in. Oh no shit. To the, to the company. He was a good looking motherfucker. Handsome like, dude. Wooly is just a. Wooly, if you're listening those, right now, you're yeah, super handsome. Wooly is just so hot. Wooly is just one of those guys <laughs> that you just fucking, he could have been like on, like he could have been in a fucking war movie. Right. Yeah. He just got that face, you know. He's, and he knows Caldwell it too. Caldwell did. <laughs> fucking Cal- terrible. Caldwell did until he got that scar on his chin. Oh, but damn, no, yeah, there you go. You, you, <laughs> Derek giveth and Derek taketh <laughs> away. <laughs> no. Caldwell brought back down to earth. I was just kidding. No, yeah. Fucking. And I remember like the, the full bird colonel that welcomed us to the to the uh, 325 was Colonel Hate and like this dude I'm like hate 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 yes I'm oh, Colonel hate. Hate. holy hate. shit yeah like okay. Path, Path great Find, name like Pathfinder Ranger I think he had a free fall badge CIB I mean this dude was like and he's all you know like I, I'll just remember being in awe of this dude and he's talking to us and there's like seven or eight of us there or whatever he's like you know I know you guys maybe think that because now it's 2004 mm-hmm. and it's like the summer of 2004 okay and he's yeah. like you know, there's still a lot of people that need killing. And I mean, that was his like welcome speech to us. And I'm like, like, these guys seem like they're legit. And so I go down to 
Bco Willie checks me in. He's like, "What are all your PT scores?" And you know, mine was like a two ninety five or something because of that run. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. And so he's like, and Willie had just left first platoon, and so he wanted to backfill first platoon with what he perceived to be good dudes, and so he assigned me. Was to he first a platoon, platoon sergeant at that time, or what was he? Because he was a younger. Nah. I'm I'm gonna take my first pee break of sure, the. Man. Is that okay? okay? Do you got yeah. a pee? Or? I'll do one too. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. We're back. Everybody back. feeling you take a I, yeah. I gotta pee. Like we went an hour. That's a pretty, pretty good, good, right? It's a pretty Two good beers stretch. And the, some water. The problem with being a well hydrated fucking person, um, not one knife. You got down. a backup knife. One yeah. Backup knife. There we go. Uh, <laughs> is I, I pee so much. Throughout That's the good day. for you. So it's uh, back into it. So you're 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 showing up to the 82nd. Yeah. Wooly's checking in. Sergeant Wooly at the time. That's right. Um, he was a good dude. And so uh. So that, and that was a uh, summer 2004. Yeah, this must have been like um, I think it's like June or July. Yeah, maybe I mean August. I'm trying to because like we showed up to Sop C. I must have been like the April class of Sop C, and then had you know had my heat injury, was hanging around for a month or so, then had the alcohol violation. So yeah, this is like mid mid to late summer. Okay. Of uh, 2004. Yeah. And keep in mind, we're deploying. I didn't know at the time, but we're deploying in November of two. Is that when you guys went? No, yeah. November. Okay, so yeah. uh, what would what, what they? Because you're an E four. Did they? What, what was your first uh, position? Yeah, so they um they had just rolled a dude off of the. I went w- straight to weapon squad. So they're like, "You're a good two forty gunner." <laughs> I was just gonna say, <laughs> this "You look heavy. like a two forty gunner, this idiot." Yep. Yeah. And um and actually, I mean, so I, I worked for Jerry Potts. Oh shit! And uh, so he was my squad leader, in the, Master in Jerry. The, yeah. That's right. And Brandon Hitson was on the other gun. Great dude. Okay. Um. And Sam Roberts and Mike Teeter were my A, B, and A, G. Teeter, Teeter is our too stupid to quit guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, the, he's the too stupid to quit motivation guy. That's right. Yeah. And uh, on um, the other gun was Caldwell. Yeah. And Chris Schubert. And, um, yeah. the, and the first guy that got, I can't remember this guy's name, and I feel so bad, but he, he ended up taking some mortar shrapnel friendly fire in Iraq. And when he moved out, I think Coke moved in. Oh, okay. To be con- That's just so weird here. to fucking, because this is, these are the people that I later yeah. fucking grew up with in yeah. the army, you know? So, okay, so you, you just, you show up, you do the training for a few months. 240 gunner, and like, it was, you know, I showed up, and like, I had a flag on my packet because of the alcohol violation, and First Sergeant Robinson, after a couple of weeks, was like, hey, I removed your flag, which means you're promotable and all that right. stuff. And, oh, really? You know, I was doing yeah. the right things. I didn't show up and let them know that I thought, and again, my, my perception of the 82nd changed very quickly. Yeah. Like as soon as we're showing up and like drawing weapons and going out to these live fire shoot and move ranges and like going to the, the shoot house with these dudes, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to be just fine with these guys. Like, these well, guys dude, are, it's weird. Like, could like guys are warriors. Everybody fucking, um, lusts after the special operations community and stuff. So, yeah. p- and people see me and they're like, I'm a, like I'm a wounded veteran and I'm still in shape. And they're right. like, were you a fucking ranger? Right. Were you a Navy seal? Were you a green? I was like, well, no. I would I like I like those guys. I would have liked to have been, but I was in the eighty second, right? And that shit was pretty fucking legit, and dude. Like the eighty like, second. You know, I mean, the eighty second like, is the big <laughs> army pipeline for yeah selection for these. I mean, guys go to the mm-hmm. cute, guys go to selection for CAG from straight from the eighty second. Yeah. So I mean, it's like legit. Yeah. So it's like because it's, I'm just like, well, we got our fucking pride too, and we were right. you know like we were, we were there to fucking do the goddamn job yeah. too, you know. Yeah. So and so you know, few few months ago, I'll never forget. The first like funny thing that happened to me there was we went, they drove us out to a range to do some training and then the plan was to have us road march back in because it was like a twelve or yeah a twelve mile one of those road ones march. yeah and it was at night okay wearing nods yeah and I had worn nods in basic but like you remember how shitty those things oh, yeah. were you yeah know? like you're kind of just out there like trying yeah. to see <laughs> yeah. your PQ your back two and yeah. stuff I don't know. so now <laughs> I have, now I actually have a PVS fourteen the monocle. And I'm trying to walk with it at night and I'm like sort of doing like the weekend at Bernie walk where I'm like <laughs> back on my, cause I can't, I have no depth perception. I'm right. carrying the, carrying the pig. Yeah. And so I'm falling to the back and like pots comes back. He's like, is like, they, they thought they had me. They thought this was like my Achilles heel. And I was, I was like, I can't fucking see with this thing. And so he kind of helped me. And then I, you know, shot caught back up and, oh, just, and, and then we get, we get back, bit, we get back from that road or? march and we turn in weapons and everyone's stretching and stuff. And I'm just all, so that was that's when I think when they kind of accepted me as like, oh, okay, this guy is gonna be okay here. Yeah, you know, and I I tried to make sure I had the appropriate amount of humility and yeah, didn't act like I was too cool or because some people you know they they think they're better than that because they've been up the street. Right. Sure. And I'm like, yeah, you better not come in here with that attitude. Yeah. You know, so, no, I I remember I definitely got a uh, a uh, 
there was like a vibe from you about that or is like because like where you know we all knew that where you you know you would come from that but um i didn't i didn't see it as a negative thing or something or like it made me i was like oh shit he's been there that's where i want to go yeah i've always so like i love i've looked up to you at since that fucking 18 years old you know because yeah. i was a fucking private that showed up so um but so you guys went in um you guys got deployed in november yeah i, I want to yeah. say like end of november early december and yeah. what what us what also helped me is that sean summers was a lieutenant for like second platoon and sean summers was a long tab he already had his sf tab because he'd been a master sergeant in like 19th or 20th group, and then he went to OCS. Is that how? Because okay, so this is oh, wow. he, he, he was out. missing digits. Now that's right. you're thinking of Colonel uh, Sanders. Our platoon. oh yeah, so I don't so, know. So I don't so know. So Sean who. Summers was the, the PL for like a second platoon maybe, and he was long like had his long tab because he'd been in SF. But you can't go to OCS and then go to back to SF as like a first lieutenant mm. or second lieutenant. Yeah. So they send you somewhere. So he had come back to the 82nd, was getting his platoon leader time before he could go back to the group. And I actually, actually, do, I actually do faintly remember this. He, would, he looked the part. And so Sean Summers, the Summers family, I think like their mom was a Green Beret. Like everybody <laughs> in that family was like a Green Beret. And so his brother, Scott Summers, was one of my cadre down the road. Mm-hmm. And um, that dude was a part, like, he's been around. He's in the book Hunt for Bin Laden and stuff. Like, he's a real deal dude. And so I don't know it for sure, but I'd like to think that maybe they told him, like, hey, Sean didn't quit Sopsy. Yeah. Right. He got booted. And so, yeah. and so, because um, Lieutenant Summers said, oh, you were the Sopsy short course. And I said, well, alcohol violation. And it was almost like, oh, okay. At least you didn't quit. Yeah. You know, like, you had a little trouble. Or sure. Right. You made yeah. a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I deployed with those guys, uh, like end of November, early December. Was that, a, was that, that was a short notice, just call them up. And yeah. It was because it was because of the elections coming up and yeah. all that stuff. And so it was always going to be like a mission specific deployment. So the elections in Iraq. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't like a, a known 12 month deployment. It was like, we're going to go over here and when we're done, you can come home. Right. Yeah. Extra thing. security while this event yeah. happens. Yeah. And then and you guys went right to, uh, right to Mosul. No, we started oh. in Baghdad. Yeah. We worked out of Camp Liberty okay. and we patrolled route Irish, like everybody in the army. Yeah. Yeah. for that went to Iraq in that time and um we worked in Baghdad for the first and it's like when I'm getting there like all these other dudes I'm with were on the invasion okay with the yeah. with this outfit so they got yeah. their CIBs and they're like cool as cucumbers and I remember like they're loading us up onto the trucks to go out for our first patrol and I think it's going to be like saving private Ryan when like the gate comes down. Like, <laughs> so, right? like uh, yeah. so I've got like my eye pro on, I've got my ear, got my ear pro in. I'm sitting there like fogging up my glasses. Like, and I'm, I've got, I've got, and I'm like, and I'm like, all right, yeah. I'm ready. And so Let her rip, right, boys. Let's go. So, and it's just dead quiet. We're like, we're still inside. We're still inside the wire, bro. Yeah. We're not even outside. Like they were just driving us from our tents to the wire to leave the wire. Uh, so we jumped off and i'm like let's get out you know let's get some <laughs> and i'm looking around and i'm like these guys like don't even have their like their vest button up yeah. and stuff they're just like what is this guy's yeah cool? they all let me do it too well, like, dude, you know? so that's that's how i showed up right i met you guys and um that got me in trouble yeah with you guys there um yeah that's, that's funny. funny. Well, when you show up in your gunk, yeah. That's and and like, you know, they're, they're kind of like fogging up your glasses. Right. It's just like, oh man, this is it. And this is war, baby. Let's heart see rate, that. heart like, rate's just going. Let's see what I'm made of. Yeah. And like, we go out and patrol. And so, and like, <laughs> there was, there was a little bit of shooting and stuff in Baghdad. <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't get to, I didn't do any. Um, mm-hmm. And then they, on New Year's Eve that year, they flew us to Mosul. So on New Year's mm-hmm. Eve, I was on oh, okay. 130 with those boys heading up to yeah. Diamondback. Fab Marez. Dude, because, you know, my fucking, um, oh, Fab Marez. Yeah. So my, I must have caught up with you guys in January. Yeah. But I remember, like, I, I like, so my, sh- so, like, this is how, this is how we met. So I showed up. I was in first 325, and you, you were in second 325 right. all the time. You so volunteered. I, to so, like, my, yeah, like, it. first 325, I was a new guy there. I showed up there. I showed up to the 82nd in November. It was on Thanksgiving, and I was only there a short little while. And did some training, and they said uh, second battalion is 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 downrange, and they need um, uh, casualty. 11, it was it was right? eleven bodies, is yeah. what they said. Is like yeah, casualty replacements. Yep. And I was the I was like, bam, this is what I'm here for. I was the first motherfucker on that list. And then there was a guy that I went through basic with, and I was like, come on, man, let's go. 
And he was like, I don't know if I want to volunteer for this. And I was like, you fucking bitch. <laughs> and I shamed that motherfucker into, uh, yeah. And he acted like that didn't fucking go down that way for the rest of our time in the army. You yeah. know? But that's how yeah. it went down. So I, I, I volunteered. Um, Did he change his mind? Did you shame him into changing no, his he, mind? He fucking went. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he was all him and hawing about him. Like, why the fuck are you here? Right. If not to go to war, Just come to on, let's go inevitable. fog up our glasses. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, that was a hundred percent me. It just goes to show, man. Everyone so, starts somewhere. Yeah. Like, but, but uh, so, so, so we were fucking, um, um, so I'm, I was just like this gung ho fucking guy. I'm like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go win the war or like, be, right. you know, I'm going to go get my, um, um, get mine. And then, so we were doing, um, it was at the, uh, battalion headquarters there and there was a Sergeant major that was coming over with us. So we volunteered. There was a, you know, a dozen of us that were going to catch up with you in Mosul. And, uh, there was a Sergeant major with us and he, he is, I'll never forget this. He's, you know, he's, he's briefing us on what we're going to be doing over there. And he's like, Hey, let me tell you motherfuckers something like everybody thinks they're fucking cool. Everybody thinks they're a fucking tough guy till that first bullet goes by your head. Yeah. And I was just like, I never considered that. Right. <laughs> you, know? you mean, wait, they're I, shooting at us. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I was like, I didn't, I didn't consider that. I was like, okay. And that, but that was for me. That was like, that was for like, it was like a, Hey Derek, there's going to, there's going to become a point in time where there's going to be a bullet that goes by your head. Yeah. And you need to have the presence of mind to react well to that or like yeah. i don't want to like hunker down or i don't nobody wants to be you don't be a fucking up them right don't be a fucking up them Derek. Right. yeah so and so and honestly like that mosul part of the deployment was awesome like we went and set up that fa our, our company size element fob out in the middle of sector you could see that um you could see the mosque that housed the remains of Jonah, the prophet jonah that eventually isis blew up i don't know if you remember that oh really but okay. so it was an old the it was an old schoolhouse and so it had like a theater like with a stage where they would perform mm -hmm. you know and um so we took that over the engineers brought in jersey walls and we did sandbags and put fighting positions on the roof and we just lived out there company size element away from the flag of command you know and so it was and so we would just patrol sector and the idea was like that let anybody that was up to no good in that space know that we weren't going anywhere like we live here Right. So we're not going to go back at night where you can do your shit. And so we'd go out and do like, you know, overnight patrols and stuff. And being the 240 gunner, we would have one platoon on patrol, one platoon on QRF with the gun trucks and one platoon on rest. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the rotation for a month or two, you know, and every once every like fifth day or something, they'd take one of the platoons back in to get like hot. You could either have enough time for a shower or a hot chow or internet cafe, but probably not all three. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so that was, man, fuck, I must have caught up with you guys. So were in you January. at that? Were you at that? Cop? I was in Mosul and I remember like the, the, there was like that governor's building. Yeah. So I, 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 so the governor's building was after this, okay. which I think maybe is when, was that the, the like first we, thing? We transferred from cop to Merez. I yes. remember that. Yep. Like I lived in that, but I don't, man, fuck, this was so long ago, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what, when did we get home from that one? It was, was it March? I want to say like April. Yeah, so my like mom's March birthday is April so. 28th. And I was so I was there with you guys birthday. for like two, two and a half months, maybe mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. But if you don't remember just, the school, that was sort of like the, that was. Well, a I don't remember a lot. Okay. But I, you know, um, I don't, I don't remember much from that deployment just because it was so long ago and a blur. Yeah. But yeah, but um, yeah, I was, I was there and um, but uh, you guys, um, you know, every, when I showed up, it was right after Sergeant Wobbler. So we were in the governor's building. I remember right where I was when the word came over that he'd been killed. Yeah, and he was, and and so this was like uh, well known. Well, I never met. I, I, I never met him. Like, I never met him. But everybody was fucking, and and so it was it was weird. This is how I got in trouble when I showed up. I showed up to this new unit, and um, I didn't I didn't know the protocol for this shit, and I just said the wrong thing at the wrong time, but not in a bad way. I just you know, so we were on the we were at the Fab Merez because I had just showed up. And um and I got assigned to first squad, I think it was. And then I and I was like and I was like went to make a phone call. They're like the phones are down. I was like why are the phones down? And they said well Sergeant Wobbler just got killed. And I said well how long are the phones going to be down? And that was the but I didn't understand. Yeah, I didn't yeah. understand. And I but like you know in basic training they don't teach you protocol for like mm -hmm. when somebody dies. It's like right. and then somebody explained to me 
we, like we have a, we have a way of 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 uh, notifying next of kin, not through the fucking grapevine. I was right. like, oh okay, right, right. Well, that makes sense. But that got me. I got kicked out of first squad, and I went to weapon <laughs> squad for that. I was like, I didn't mean any fucking disrespect. Right. And when you're 18 years old, you're like fucking gung ho. Yeah. You're like, wait, why is every? And to be honest, I was like, why is everybody fucked up about somebody dying? Like we're at war. We should know that somebody's. Yeah. But but. It's that weird thing. Well, and Sergeant Wobbler, like this dude was, he was a scout. He was on the H, he was on the scouts. Mm -hmm. And this dude, Ranger tabbed, and like he was, uh, he'd been like the 82nd soldier of the year. Like, really? Before. Yeah. And just, to, but like I met him in the gym and we just exchanged pleasantries. Like I wouldn't say that we were friends, but he knew me and I knew him. And, mm -hmm. you know, they'd say, hey, go get Wobbler for like a mission briefing. And I go into, the scout platoon's tent and his, he had set up his little hooch with like, I think his sheets were like Scooby-Doo or something. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, this guy must be bad as fuck. Yeah. He's got Scooby-Doo sheets. Yeah. And he was. And so like, I think for me, his death hit and he's, who's on my bracelet it, because I'm like, if, if that guy can get killed over here, like what chance do I have? Because that guy how did, how knows did what he he's die? doing. I, so I, I just reread re -read this, but I think it was, um, and for if for if I get this wrong, just yeah, forgive me. It's been a long yeah, time. Yeah. It's tough. But man. I feel yeah. like somebody had dug in an I they they had seen somebody dig in an IED or they'd seen an enemy position and so he put Overwatch on it to to you know to start um, putting people on there. And one of his guys got hit or they opened up on him and he went out to return fire and did return fire and, and killed a couple of those dudes. And I think he took one through the side and it got into his liver. Really, and so okay. he died before they could medevac him out of there. Yeah. yeah, but shot, not not IED, but actually yeah. direct small arms. Okay, yeah. And then Chris Pusateri, who was also when what 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 date did he get? That was February sixth, um, February, that he died. And so I, I wherever whatever they were whatever scouts were doing, I was in the governor's building. Yeah, and I was like chilling, waiting to go up take guard duty or something, and and heard that and was like, wait, wobbler. Yeah, and so I think that's why it hit a lot of guys hard because like that dude is so squared away and so good, yeah. like that yeah. he can still die. Oh, it was really weird and it was kind of shitty, or it made me feel ostracized instantly. I didn't mean anything yeah. by saying. Yeah, I just I was like, what? How long are the phones going to be down, or why are they down? I didn't understand. Right. right, and I just I didn't. I was I was insensitive at the wrong time, but not on purpose. And yeah, I'm, not, I'm not a fucking. I'm like, you oh, I think, don't care. Like, Let's fucking go. I, I would have said yeah. the actual right thing to do would have been like. Pull you aside, like, hey man, like, that's the wrong thing to say. And right, then yeah. let, get, let you go on about your business. Yeah, but right. People, people are young, reactionary, yeah, like young, young like and dumb. Type, yeah. yeah, they're like, get yeah. the fuck out of my sweat. I'm like, oh shit, Jesus Christ. Okay, <laughs> they're like, fuck that guy. He's a piece of shit. I'm like, and then I was like, treat you know, they're like, yeah. when you're a new guy showing up, they're like, fuck this fucking guy, which is fair and stuff. Nobody knew that I had volunteered to right. switch units and come right. over and stuff like that. But yeah, everybody, like, man, over the, like Sergeant Wobbler is almost like. Or everybody knew his name yep. in the three two five, and I I never met him or anything like that. But this, his um his um just his existence impacted a lot of motherfuckers yeah. yep. in a really good way, and everybody was um yeah yeah so solid dude. So that was the yeah so, um yeah so we did Mosul and we we got back March yeah and it was like after April. the election they moved us into Fab Marez and we're staying in those connexes with like bunk beds and air yeah. conditioning and we're going we have shower buildings and, and we're, we were doing presence patrol like alternating we, we were, were still going out into sector but it was and stuff like the like shooting that. was pretty much done yeah you know, for that deployment and uh, they had that badass gym and so like Caldwell and I just started lifting twice a day and just yeah. getting getting jacked. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you and you and Sean Caldwell there. Yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, was, I, I really enjoyed you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and Caldwell was cool too because I mean that guy. Like, I think he's got. Did a, he get out of the army after that deployment? I think so. Yeah, I think so that was his last. So last we one. got back from that deployment and everybody went on leave, but I didn't go on leave, and mm -hmm. Caldwell stayed back because I think he was getting out, and so it was like. And he, and so his barracks room was just down the hall. So he was in, I'll never like, he was in cowboy boots, black gym shorts and a cowboy hat <laughs> <I'm> drinking. <laughs> Sounds uh, right. He, he, it was a, uh, the J dog and G tiger, Jack Daniels and green, green tea, tea. Falls and, well. uh, and playing his fucking, uh, fucking video game. That oh, he, uh, like yeah. The shooting game. One of those. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jack but Daniels and green tea. J the J dog and G tiger. He calls it the balls. Well, yeah, dude, that's just legit. Cause the green tea like, that got me arrested. Take a shot and the green tea yeah. eradicates the, that shit got me arrested. Wow. It's a real, it's a real sorority girl move, but yeah. it tastes, it tastes <laughs> yeah. good. It tastes good. Yeah. No, it's really good. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, he, 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 yeah, the balls will J dog and G tiger. That's mm-hmm. how I remember it. <laughs> J Jack Daniels and green tea, right? Green, green the tea. Arizona green tea. Yeah. The big mm-hmm. jug. Yeah. Um, so, 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 so as far as like we get back, um, but then how long did you stick? Around? Cause you went, you went yeah. back, you went back to, I went back. I, w- I wanted to get back to the selection, man. I yeah. wanted to get back to the Q course. I felt mm-hmm. like, you know, I learned a lot. I was really I was really thankful to have had my time in the 82nd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it grew me up. It made me a better. I got pinned with my five when we got back, mm-hmm. um, which they didn't have to do, but they did me a solid because, like, they were redeploying uh, in, like, the fall, I think. Yeah, we went to tell And uh, yeah. Matt Mays was like, hey, I, like, at that time, your packet, your, your selection packet superseded anything. Yeah. So I dropped a selection packet and then came down on recruiting orders. Yeah. And they were kind of, yeah. yeah. What? Because uh, Brandon, yeah. Brandon Woolley uh. pulled recruiting orders too. And he actually did his recruiting time. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So I came down on recruiting orders. Teeter pulled them at the same time and yeah. went and did recruiting. And they were kind of laughing because they're like, oh, recruiting. And I ran right up to the SF recruiting building and they picked up the phone and were like, beep, boop, boop. And no recruiting more recruiting. Were gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> gone. <laughs> gone. No beep, more. Boop, boop, yeah. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Don't worry Canceled. about it. You're yeah, I, I remember that. Like a lot of motherfuckers were taking off going during recruiting and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And like I mean, that. you know, like re- recruiting, if, if you've been deployed two times or three times, go, why wouldn't you go hometown recruiting for a couple of years and right. chill for a minute? So, and all, and like, um, so yeah. So I went to, and, and uh, first Sergeant Robinson was gone. First Sergeant Mickey Ross. Ross. So when you're, when you're talking about Sergeant Wobbler and his Scooby-Doo sheets. Yeah. Uh, first Sergeant Ross. It's just a God. He was so fucking funny, just man. But chill, there was something chill. about him where it's yeah. like, hey, this seems like a really approachable guy, but I don't want to make him mad. Right. Because he's just like, he was, uh, and he could run his fucking ass off. And he was just this cool OG, very tough. But this motherfucker would walk around the company area. He'd take a shower. He'd got his towel around his waist and his flip-flops were yellow with flowers. <laughs> Cause like, and, and I'm just like, you're fucking with me and I know it. You, right. are fu- you are trying to make me get too friendly with you just right. so you can fuck me up and have a laugh at it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, I fucking love for Sergeant Ross, so man. Dude. God. And I, like literally, I, he didn't He's say, still funny on Facebook today. He is His memes cat. that he shares are yeah. fucking great. Yeah. He didn't, say, he, he didn't say much to me. He knew I was outbound and I... He's like, look, man, I'm never going to be the guy that gets in the way of someone's career aspirations. Like, if that's what you want to do, you're, I'm going to sign you. You're free and clear to go. And um, I remember when we were in, when we were in Mosul, uh, first Sergeant Robinson being like, Sean, why do you want to be a Green Beret? And I'm like, it just seems like that works the best with my skill set. Like, they're, they're, they're mind first soldiers. They're, they're uh, force multipliers. They win hearts and minds. They influence. He's like, yeah, but if you want to, like, be a killer. He's like, go to battalion, you know, mm-hmm. go to ranger bat. So he, he was sort of pleading that case. And, but because I still had all those, my buddies were now assigned to third group and first group and stuff. And I'm like, no man, I'm hearing their stories too. And like, I th- just think that that's where I, where I could make the best impact. Right. You know? And, and so, uh, I dropped my packet. I went to selection in September. That would have been September, 2005. I think that was the last, cause you know, f- the class numbers bear based on the army fiscal year. So which starts in October. So I think that was the last class of fiscal year 05 in September. And I am a, I go through it and like, I was in shape and I was strong as hell from like mm-hmm. the last, yeah, you were the last part of the deployment. 210 pounds yeah. of fucking jack but I, steel. I had not rucked, you know, I had not rucked at all. And okay. so getting out to McCall and going, you know, breaking draws and so stuff. So at this point, you didn't have to go through SOPSY? You just no, went right to SOPSY selection? is only for X-ray, dude, 18 X-ray dudes. Oh, okay. To get you ready for so, selection. So you go to selection. Now I'm, now I'm going to selection just like anyone else in the Army. And that's a 24? 24 days at yeah. that point. And so they take us out there and, you know, and so I'm having to get reacquainted with Land Nav because I haven't done it now really for a year. Right. You know, and so getting reacquainted, go through, you know, I, I at that point, at that class, if you do the, did the star course, which is the big land nav yeah. exercise, if you were a star one go, you were chilling for two days because you didn't have to run it again. Mm. And I did not find all four points. And so I did all three stars. Um, I lost nine toenails. Like the bottoms of my feet came off. I just had not prepared my feet. I was oh. underprepared on that side. And yep. so, and I, why, 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 but 
You were in the. Why were you underprepared? Uh, because did like there's there's. I did not rock. I didn't rock it. Yeah. So like my when did I you, was it, did you think because you were good or something? Yeah, like I'm just that? like yeah, yeah. I didn't need to rock. Okay. I mean, that, like that yeah. felt like natural to me, and it was. But like under those conditions, wet yeah, feet. Yeah, but that's like that's elite rocking. Yeah, for shit. sure. Yeah, for sure. And and I'd never been to selection. I mean, my buddies sure, that I G two yeah. it with were like, yeah, man, you'll be good. And you know they're yeah, just trying just, to pump me yeah. up. So you'll be good. And they just remember me from Sop C being like, you're a ruck master, like, no, sweat it. Right. Mm-hmm. Now a year's gone by. Right. And that's, mm-hmm. so it's on me. So I get to team week, I'm limping around, I'm, I'm alive. I, I was only asking that because, no, no, like, maybe somebody's listening that wants to go that route. Yeah. It's like, how, like, how, prepare your feet. Prepare, prepare your, your feet. Fucking, prepare your like, feet. ruck. And, like, people are like, or it's weird because people, um, a lot of people write and ask me, you know, I want to go special forces, something like that. Yeah. What should I do? And I was like, let's be clear. I didn't. Right. get there right. you know? right. also like i don't know but if i was to go there yeah. this here's is what, what i, I think i would and do i'll tell you, you know? now it's yeah. such a different time now like there are there is so much out there to prep you for mm-hmm. a special operations course like mm-hmm. so spend the money go to the camp do the like take that instruction listen to those guys like yeah. do it i mean if that if you're serious just, about just it just rock you have to have that stuff wasn't there when i went when i went through right uh, but now like, if i had like Follow the training curriculum and get yourself ready. So I get to team week and I'm a liability to my team because I'm slow because my feet are chewed up. And so I probably peered pretty low. Anyway, I'm a 24 day non-select, which means you finished this. You finished all of selection. They are not going to select you. Who's they? The, the cotton. The cotton really? there. So they call you up by your roster number and they're like, we're not selecting you this time around. Congratulations on finishing. You are welcome. So back you anytime. finished. And I you, finished. You finished and, and just wasn't and selected. Met the standards and just did, yeah. did not. Probably didn't meet the standards. Okay. If I wasn't selected. Yeah. Probably too slow on the land nav. Probably didn't find enough points on the land nav. Probably peered low with my team because I was slowing them down. And so they didn't. They didn't tell you why. Did you have a good attitude throughout it all? Uh, yeah, or? I think so. I mean, I think so. And I think I must have done okay on like my wonderlick and my psych and stuff because they're like. It's just hearing this makes me angry. I want to know why you didn't make like. Oh, Sean I, it, it, had to, it had it yeah. had to be because of yeah. it had to be because of the f- being slow. Sure, and, it's just and like, the land hey, man, this is it's That's performance. Right. Yeah, and actually, and like yeah. I know guys, there was a dude there that was like a, a bat boy that climbed every rope obstacle on Nasty Nick without using his feet. <laughs> And had had deployments, and I thought he was a great dude. And they they NTR'd him, never to return. Oh wow! And they that's probably because of something they saw on his psych profile right. or his testing or whatever. They it's do all these the, weird psychological tests yeah. out there and shit. So, so um, I'm gonna uh, hijack it a little bit and sure. like, But you said something that was you know. So when you were talking about how First Sergeant Robinson said, "Ensley, why do you want to go?" special forces route and you and you explained what that job was so i i um i joined and i wanted to go the special forces route but it wasn't until two years after in the army did i understand what that job was yeah you think it's just like fucking gunslinger just and that's it um which it is they do a lot of cool guy shit but it's that um i learned the word rapport because i was reading books in my in my personal time because I wanted to go the Green Beret route, but um, I was a baby face bitch. I, I joined at 18, 18, yeah. 19. Um, um, and I and I was looking at guys. I was looking at you. I, I was I, I look at you and how you carried yourself and how you were. And I would just and I just I just knew I'm like, I'm not that yet. I'm not I'm not that I don't have that confidence. I don't have that presence. I don't have I don't build others up around me yet. I'm just not there yet, you know? And and it's like, that's what I wanted to go that route. Once I learned more about what that job is, I was like, oh, yeah. Like, I understand why I'm sort of drawn to this, I guess, because it is that big boy thing, the yeah. force multiplier, like building rapport with people. And it's not like you, it's just um, what a cool, what a cool job to have. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, like the way they, I mean... The big thing to me that always stood out was somebody was like, you know, SEALs don't plan their own missions. Like, they're executing missions that are dictated to them by somebody in a command post mm-hmm. a thousand miles away, whereas ODAs have a captain who's right there making the call, and they're kind of executing. Yeah. And they, they do just seem to be like, they just, their their mind is their primary weapon, yeah. and then everything else is secondary so that's, and tertiary. It, so that's what I was working on in 2006. I was reading every fucking thing I could, because I, like, physically in the Army, I was good to go mentally i wasn't i wasn't mature enough i just straight up wasn't mature enough yet and so i was reading 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 and then we got deployed and then i was and then on that deployment in 07 i was like i think 
I think I've earned a shot at trying finally. And I never got the opportunity to try. And I would, I can't even, and I'm not so fucking arrogant to say that I would have made it or something mm-hmm. like that. But, um, it's just, uh, that I was, I was, that was my, that was my life plan there yeah. To, yeah. to get that. And I just wanted it. And because I respected them so much right. and it was such a cool, um, what a cool way to spend your life. Yeah, totally. Being, and being around those people. Right. And you got to go there and fucking and taste I, it I and just see the cadre. I just, yeah. I'm so motivated by those type of characters, know. you know. And, and that was a big draw, too, is like I knew the kind of people. I had seen enough to know what was there mm-hmm. a little bit. I mean, I didn't, I mean, I hadn't seen, I hadn't made it through, but I'm like, just the quality of people that were there. I'm like, I want to be around those guys. And like 82nd, great dudes. Mm-hmm. And just, but like, imagine the top performers from there. Times everybody's like that. All and in you're one all, fucking, you're trying yeah. to keep up, you know? Yeah. And so that was a bummer, but it also, like, I, I came back, uh, and I think I was on, I think I was on rear D, because you guys had deployed. You guys yeah. had left for the ta- the yeah. So here's where I'm confused, because I don't know exactly what happened with everything with you. So what happened after the... So that, so after the 24-day non-select, I came back, and I dropped my packet to go right back. Mm-hmm. So I skipped the October course. And was going to go class 0206, which was November of 05, but fiscal year 06. And yeah, so, and we were in Talifar from September right. to December. Right. Something like that. So I'm that. on rear yeah. D with mm-hmm. the 325 doing mm-hmm. CQ and just working out. And mm-hmm. now it's like, it's funny, at the end of selection, they're like, how'd you prepare your feet? And one of the answers is, I came to selection and didn't pass. And that was that's exactly what happened. My feet for the second time were like, Strong Joe Rogan. Yeah. I could yeah. walk across yeah. fire, you know, like yeah. no toenails to worry about because they were all Oh, gone. really? Yeah. Okay. And so I went back the second time and just like smoked it yeah, because I knew all the, I'd been through the whole process. So okay, I knew so. there was a long run and a short run. I knew there was a long ruck and a short ruck. And I, I, during team week, I knew all the apparatus. And so, I mean, I just, I knew how to do everything kind of unfair. And I, so, so, okay. So you, you do selection 24 day non-select. You're back in October. Back a month later. Okay, yeah. cool. So this dude, this is what I love. So that um, you didn't quit. Nah, man, couldn't. You didn't. You didn't give up. That was on the whole it. reason that, I joined you the did, army. You, you didn't fucking. Yep. Um, and that's 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 awesome. And and I I fucked up too because I quit PRC twice. And we talked about this on an episode. And like I quit, but I learned. And, and like you didn't quit, but like you know, failure is failure. Yep. And it and you fucking you learn a lot from it. You you and it and it hurts the same. Like cause like you, I, I quit and I was like fuck, dude, that was a stupid mistake. Or like maybe for you, it's like fuck, I didn't prepare my feet. That was mm-hmm. a stupid mistake. And you fucking go back and you try. And I quit twice. I made it. And but I was after the second time, I was like, I know what my fucking weakness is. Like my weakness is it is it, it, like I learned my lesson is like dealing with the bullshit. You know. Yeah. Um. But I was. But it's um. <sighs> failure can fuck you up. And what I really loved is that, that podcast, we've talked about it before. What's his name? It's a uh, Mick, the, the Delta guy, the K guy on Jocko's McNamara, Pat McNamara, Pat McNamara. Pat McNamara. Yeah. This dude was, he did the whole know, fucking yeah, shebang. That guy. The, yeah. Come a little so, f- sure. so fucking cool. And he, and his, he, he did the podcast and I listened to him and he's like, Oh yeah, I went there and I failed, but I went back and I got it right. And then right. I did this and I fucking failed. Right. But then I went back and I got it right. And this is a guy who did the damn thing. And you just look at this guy and he's like, that dude, like there's no quit in this guy. There's no failure. But then you hear their stories, and he's yeah. like, "Oh yeah, I failed the fuck out of that. Yeah, I made I made this stupid mistake, but I went back, and then I and I fixed my shit. You yep. know, yeah. but like some people, it's hard to do, or it's hard to it's it hard is. to eat that failure. And I, I remember and like at did the you end, get fucked up a little bit after? No, or? I mean really like so at the end of that first twenty four day non select, I remember like that was the first time I could use the phone, so I'm calling everyone to let them know that I'm coming back because like you're locked down, like you there's no phones or anything for so you just tell people. Going away for a month, you'll hear from me. Hopefully not before not twenty-four before days. Month, yeah. right. <laughs> so I'm calling my parents to be like, "I'm okay. I didn't make it." And I kind of choked up on the phone, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, "But I didn't quit," you know. And they're like, "Of course you didn't quit. You're not a quitter." And I'm like, "Which is funny because I have quit in the past. <laughs> yeah. but I didn't quit this." Yeah. And so I honestly, I went back. Caldwell and I were sharing an apartment. I th- or I was still living with some buddies. The, and the other thing that worked against me is like my friends in special forces were the dudes that like got through everything first go mm-hmm. just made it look like pretty easy. Um, and like, they're the, and they're like, yeah, man, you got this. Like, it's not, you know? And so 
I didn't have to think long before I was like, I'm going to go back. And, I, I, but I did have that moment of like, now that I know what it entails, it's almost worse because I know everything that's coming. And do I want to do that again? And I was like, you know what? Ultimately it was, you know, yes, I would be disappointed yeah. if I didn't do it right. again. And, um, so I went back and again, that second time through it, it sucked the same, but it yeah. also felt like I had an advantage because it was, it was funny. It was over Thanksgiving. There's almost something about familiarity a little bit. It's yeah. Like, yeah, so totally. like when I, when I like, I have CrossFit competitions and I run through the workouts and it's like, Oh, this is going to hurt. It's, and it's like the stress and the pressure, but there's something about familiarity. Like it's okay to go somewhere and try something right fucking fail right and then when you go through the next time it hurts just the same but you, you, you just, know what to you, expect you, you grow you get you know better. there's an end yeah. to it and mm-hmm. it was funny like some of the mental games too like that second class was over the thanksgiving and so they served us a thanksgiving dinner like Uh-oh. brought us into the classroom and like hey guys tonight's a night off like we got thanksgiving dinner in 05 up. too uh colonel gibson forced us to come back from our fucking overwatch position yeah. to come get uh, uh, a Thanksgiving meal dinner. right out of the fucking uh, green bins, whatever the fuck they were <laughs> called. Yeah. And it was shit. And we were like, can we just go fucking do right, our job? Right. You know, like we had a really cool overwatch position <laughs> set up. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, and so then after that, sure enough, like they line us up and they're, you know, out there at selection, they're like, just follow the chem lights. They don't tell you how far you're going or like, do your best, follow the chem lights. And you just see some hands go up. They're like, I just ate all this turkey. I'm done. Oh, then, you guys got band of brothers. And like so the then they, so then they start us off, and we go. Da- and after the guys quit and they pull them out, they start us off. We go down a hundred yards, left a hundred yards, and they're like, "Stop, go to bed." So they had just like Let you know, people, fucking, people had quit because yeah. they're like, yeah. "I can't. It's too much for me to get past this event." So that That's was like, my that, dude. That was um, um, when I quit PRC, those were. There's just, I don't even remember the first time why I quit, but I, I quit in like the first three or four days or something. Mm-hmm. And it was just not, I wasn't mentally tough enough to deal with that. And that's, and, and, and so like, but in the army, it's like all, all, all I thought you needed to be was physically tough. Right. But if you want to do that big boy, cool shit, you have to be physically and mentally tough. That's so cool to yeah. me. It's so like hearing that story. And I like, think, I think that's the part for like, guys who might be listening that are aspiring for that, like it's easy to train your body mm-hmm. e- comparatively. Yeah. It's tougher to train your mind. Yeah. And so you really have to be, you know, your reasons for being in that course and that pipeline, be it buds or rip or rasp or is you have to want to be there. You can't yeah. be there to prove to somebody that didn't think you could do it. You can't be there to like impress your girlfriend or, you know, your parents, you have to be there and it has to be you that wants it because when it's bad, you start questioning why am I doing this? Yeah, or Everybody like no, does. no, ma- like the the courses are set up to force you to ask to that question. question. Yeah, and you need sure. to. And so I love um, Dan Crenshaw's book Fortitude. I talk about it quite often. But he you know, like his story going through buds. He was just for him. He was like quitting wasn't an option for me, and that struck a chord with me because like the way I think, everything is always an option mm-hmm. in my world. You know, but, um, uh, um, but I've learned that over time and like quitting isn't an option for me anymore. Like when, you know, we did our tough mutters and things like that, but, but back then I was just too young. I didn't know that yet. Quitting is not an option. If you go into these things, um, with the mentality, like quitting isn't an option. They're going to, they're going to put things, they're going to put things in my brain they're gonna, they're gonna make me want to quit. They're doing it on purpose. Yeah. They're making you want to quit. They're putting that inner monologue of like, Making you question why you're there and That's stuff. Right. And if it's like quitting isn't an option, it's not an option. And when it comes into your head, you're just like, <laughs> they're trying to get me. Right. The fucking bastards. Yeah. Right. Isn't that, that fucking run is it was only a 200 fucking meter run. Yeah. They were just, and it was just quit, there to get people just to like, quit. Fuck. And imagine how, cause you don't get to go right home and like have a warm shower. Like they keep you out there to mm-hmm. like help them run the course. So you're right. still out there for the full 24 days. Yeah. You're just in the, in the loser shed, you know, whatever they called it. (laughs) So, so yeah, man. So, um, I passed that course like in December of Oh, uh, Oh five came home, got a little block leave, came home, felt great. I'm like a pass selection, you know, because what's, what's next? Next is the Q course and you have to wait for a date for that. And that's the, uh, the SFQC out of, yeah. Out of, out of, uh, brag. I'm going to take one more pee break. Sure. We'll get into the Q course. Okay. Yep. Great.
Good to go. We're clear. We were uh, shoot, uh, uh, pee break number two there you go. is over. We were just uh, shooting the shit here about MREs. Yeah, I love them. Um, I always loved yeah, them. Wh- when did you join the army? The first time was ninety six. Yeah, so you were. So <laughs> I, I had. Like, yeah. yeah, so I had like. Uh, well, he's it like, I remember C rations. <laughs> right. like, yeah. We did have them out once. <laughs> I, I did have C rations once. Um, was it a tin can? Uh, yeah, but it was like, like a the, cat food can. Yeah, then and they were bringing them out. To, like, get rid of them. Yeah, I was listening to a podcast, <laughs> and, a, and a saw guy was talking about how he always, like, enjoyed his can of peaches. You oh, know? yeah. Those, got, those guys are bad motherfuckers. Dude. The Vietnam saw. I, I look around your bookcase here, and I'm like, read that book, read that book. Like, you got to read these yeah, books. Yeah, you have yeah. to read these books. When you're pumping yeah. yourself up as a young man to go yeah. do that stuff. Well, Charlie Beckwith. <laughs> yeah, you man. read that book. Yeah. <laughs> And like Sog and Mac V, like those guys. Yeah. There's also a great book called True Stories of the Green Berets, and it's a, a lot of it's about like the OSS guys and then into the Vietnam era Green Berets. Yeah. And like one of those guys on a patrol, he had a claymore strapped to his ruck, you know, facing out. And his his fail his like last ditch plan was to go up and hug a tree and touch that thing off if he had to. Yeah. I'm like, oh, holy yeah, well, they're like, shit. but the, like those Saw guys are like, you cannot be captured. Right, cannot right. be captured. Yeah. And I, I was actually, um, when I read, you know, the uh, Sog, yep, that book there. It was an 07 in Iraq, the deployment. Yeah. I, I read that book, and I was at this point. This is my third deployment, and I was like, I know war. And I read that book, and it was like early on in the book, and there yeah. was like so many times we would see the helicopters leave, and we would never see them come back. Right. And nobody asked questions, and nobody. It was just like that's it. That was the fucking nature of the beast. Yeah, they just and it or was. Or you like, hear about them calling in calling in air on their own position. Yeah. Right. Like we're done. We're or overrun. There was overwatch. And if they didn't call it in, they would fucking drop the bombs right. on them. Right. Just because they can't. There's a be. guy in that book and they're like, sir, he's like, we are all dead. Yeah. Send it. I'm mm-hmm. just like, yeah, dude, Woof. that's some fucking next level shit. Right. So yeah. That's um, crazy. Yeah. So, um, getting back. So you're going to the Q course. Right. And this, and so people, um, so the Q course is, it's like two years, isn't it? This it is de- where yeah, it depends. So it depends yeah. on what your MOS is going to be. Right. And, and so and when do you find that out? You, you put a wish list together, I think in, in a, in selection and you say my preferred language is or one, two, three, you know, Ar- Farsi, Arabic, and French or what, you know, Spanish mm-hmm. or Mandarin or whatever. And my preferred MOS is Delta Echo Charlie or Bravo Charlie, you know, whatever. And so, what did you pick? I picked Charlie, eighteen Charlie, which, which is, an is engineering sergeant. So, okay. like, they build stuff and then blow stuff up. Cool, yeah. Demo and all my like a lot of my buddies, most of my buddies had gone ch- at Charlie course. Okay. Um, my one buddy Zach was a Bravo. I think my buddy Isaac was an Echo. Wooly was a Sard. I was an Echo. Okay. Echo's combo, combo, right? Yeah. yeah. And those guys are, are man. They're. It's not like you're. It's not like you're. Prick two or whatever combo. Right. It's, like, RTL, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like repositioning satellite combo. Like yeah. weird, weird <laughs> yeah. So um, I had a cute. I had to wait for a Q course date. Uh, you guys had come back, and so rather than stay on rear D at the, because now I can't, I can't do anything at my old unit. Like you are, you're awaiting a date for the Q course, so they can't put you, they can't deploy you. Right. They can't send you back to the line. That you're just waiting for your date. Yeah, because I remember seeing you around and stuff. Yeah. But at, but at this point, like I was a fucking gun team leader. Right. And I was like, wait, what the fuck? Is I think Inslee you, doing I think here? you or Coke. One of you guys took my gun. So Coke, like that. So that 2005 deployment was interesting because it was like it was it was me and Coke on the guns. Um, or I was on one and Coke was on the other, mm-hmm. and then Sergeant Potts was our squad leader. Mm-hmm. But that deployment, if that was a four month deployment. I think he was, Sergeant Potts was gone for like two months. Oh, yeah. And that he, reminds me. He was yeah. training the cops. Okay. Somewhere else. And so Coke and I were fucking E3s. And I think Coke had my, so before before we left that Mosul deployment, uh, Corporal Kilmer got sent back and yeah. I moved on to a gun, t- a rifle team. Okay. And I think yeah. Coke took my gun and Sean okay. Caldwell kept the other one. Yeah. And I must have taken, taken Caldwell's or yeah, something cause like I, that. Yeah. Because yeah. I returned as a rifle, like a rifle squad leader. And then you think then Caldwell was bailed and you must have taken. Yeah, because it was all weird because like Roberts went scouts or something yep. like that. It, yep. was, it was man, it's so long ago. It's I hard know, to remember. Dude. Like when I talk about these things, I always try to be clear. Like I'm working off the best memories right. available to me, and they could be wrong. I'm actually and surprised I, with how well these things are coming back to me. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Um, or you just you just you just hope you say the right thing, you know? Because yeah. like like oh no, that's not how it fucking happened. Well, like fuck. God, 15 right. years ago. Shit. Sorry. Sorry, man. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, but it was, but it was, but it was interesting. It was a, um, that 2005 deployment 
grew me up fast. It was a it was a change all of a sudden because the our squad leader was gone, and me and I was 19 years old. Team leader. I mean, when you're a gun team leader, you're a team leader, but not a team leader. They don't view it the same. Yeah, you, you, but right. but you have to be in on the fucking team leader meetings, That's and right. you're just like the fucking oh, there there I am again for the millionth time in my life, the fucking black swan, right? You Phil, know, yeah. like shit. They're, they're yeah. like they're like your squad leader will tell you where to be, dummy. Like yeah. you don't have to worry about it. But um, but Sergeant Potts was gone, mm. and it was it was it was me and Coke, and only one time did we leave a a team on a roof when the patrol was already back. Eh. It wasn't me, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's perfect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But so, then you, you were, ch- you were hanging around. I was, but then I, I, yeah. um, I actually went up to the SF recruiting uh, depot, which is on, the, which is on Bragg mm-hmm. and said, Hey, can I come, can I come work here while yeah. I'm waiting for my class date? And me and this guy, Paul Mayno, cause you were on rear, you were on rear. rear D. D. Yeah. Yeah. Like and that. like, instead of hanging around doing CQ, picking up, yeah. trash and shit. I was like, Hey, can I come? And they're like, yeah, you guys pass selection. You can come in here, wear PTs and like these SF recruiting shirts every day and help us give briefings. And, and that was really cool, man. Like they, there were some senior SF dudes like Steve Pumphreys and a couple other guys. Like these guys had been like, uh, OGs down at like seventh group going and running stuff in Panama and whatnot. And now they're kind of in the twilight of their career doing this recruiting thing, but they were all tab dudes. Yeah. And so it was great. Cause they would like during the day, if we were slow, we'd break out the mats and roll yeah, you know, really? or we'd um, or they they'd give us like they'd teach us stuff out of the Ranger Handbook and give us patrolling less so that when because like the first thing we would start in when the Q course started was uh, SUT Phase Two Small Unit Tactics. Okay, yeah, and because I already had my five, Paul already had our five. We they still do a, they did a condensed PLDC and BNOC. Okay, that they would put you through that took like two weeks, and yeah. so that at the end of the course, if you were an E four, you got immediately pinned with your five. And if you were an E5, you pretty much got immediately penned with your six when you went to group. Okay. There's nice. Yeah. yeah. So, so I was out at that. And again, like during that time, we're lifting, we're, we're running. But well, And you're talking with guys and hearing conversations and absorbing yeah. the, the environment of that right. type of unit. And which, at that point, again, those guys were like, they're like, this, the smoking is over. Like they're like, the stuff that's going to suck now is like, the patrolling in SUT sucks. It's like a little ranger school. Yeah, now you, you got to be a fucking big boy. Right. And they're like, and you know, your them. MOS training is fun, but it's, they'll find a way to make it suck. It's long. And, you know, when you're doing your FTX at the end of that, it's sucky. But it's not really a smoke anymore. The work itself is the smoke. Like yeah. the in, infill, mm-hmm. exfill is a smoke. It all sucks. So I felt like I was prepared. And so now I class up and it was, my birthday is June 1st. And June 1st of 2006, I think was like my 26th, birthday okay and i am out at that day i'm out at camp mccall start I've classed up and i've been made the class leader even though i'm an e5 and classed are, up means i'm classed up for sut for phase two okay which so, includes this so you're you're fucking in the q course it, you're yeah, doing I'm in the, the damn q thing. course yeah. it, it includes pldc b knock mm-hmm. and so it's like this block of training you're going to be at mccall for a month or something yeah and so you pack up all your you do your packing list your layout you go out there and for some reason like at that time there were guys in my class who were more senior, like E6s and E7s, but they, if you had a Ranger tab, you didn't have to do SUT. And there were all these little caveats. Like if you've already been to Ranger school, you don't need SUT. It's a refresher for you. So I am the class leader for a hundred guys or whatever it is as an E5, junior E5. And I hadn't even been to PLDC. And so we're out there and Again, we're just, this is June 1st and they're, they're out. Some of those guys, some of the cadre just let their platoons PT themselves. They're like, make sure you guys PT out here. I'm not going to lead you on PT. Just be PT. Our guy was like, we're going to go for a run. Mm -hmm. And so we start running at like, you know, six and by seven, the heat index out there is a bajillion. It's a hundred degrees, hundred percent humidity. We're out running. I don't, McCall is like the only place I've seen where you're in the woods and there's beach sand. Yeah, like, I'm like, how did they, how is this out here? <laughs> we put it there just for right. you. And so uh, we're running and uh, we had our canteens, but I mean, they'd gone dry. And I was under the impression that if you fell out, you had just failed SUT and we're was, gone. Was this another uh, like candidate who's leading this PT? No, or this, this is, is a cadre. This, this is a cadre. Dude. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so we're running and I mean, I, we had watches on, we I think in my in my report it says we were doing a five mile run, but I it was more than five miles. They had us out there for a while yeah. doing buddy carries. It's a gentleman's stuff. five gentleman's miles. Gentleman's five. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and so uh, running along, I woke up on a on a bird on a helicopter with an ice water enema 
and ice packs in my armpits. And I was like, what the fuck happened? I was just, and they're like, yeah. And they were flying me to Womack. I can't remember. I, um, so that's heat stroke number two. Yeah. And those are, so I, I went down with a heat stroke and I can't, I can't remember what year it was. I think I can't remember if it was before Talifar or in 2006. You're more susceptible after you have the first one. Mm -hmm. So for, so actually I, it must've been 2005 for me because I was fighting. They made me Mm non-deployable. So I went down on this trench range, um, uh, with a 105.6 mm-hmm. and it was just the same thing i was walk it was it was a weird i was a, i was a, i was carrying the gun and i was walking and i was like all i remember is like i saw the medics start looking at me and they were walking towards me and i was like what the fuck is going on and the next thing i remember i was on a truck mm-hmm. with a fucking and i actually like it was one of the few i fucking i, I woke up and i started like crying a little bit because like mm-hmm. the dude was just raping my ass <laughs> you know and not even being <laughs> you know? gentle like, like, and they got, they got, they got your <laughs> shit is cut open You're naked. they got fucking yeah. ice packs yeah. and your armpits and everything like that so mm-hmm. and then i go to womack and then i get released and uh smallwood picks me up and i got a fucking hospital gown on and jungle boots. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good look. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's a great look. Right? It's like, right. fuck, man. I'm like, I don't, you know, <laughs> you can't control that shit. Yeah. You know, like, it gets hot as fuck there at Fort Bragg. Three, so I was telling Owen before we started, three guys went down that day. Yeah. And now the Army's, look, now the army's looking at this as like, you just broke government property. Right. Those guys had been through selection. The day, they were supposed to be here. We, and you broke them. We picked these guys. Right. We, we wanted the day, them. The day I went down, they had to set up a whole fucking tent for the yeah. number of guys that were going down with minor heat injuries. Yeah. But I just had a straight up fucking heat. heat ca- I was a heat casualty. Right. And then they make you non-deployable. And I had to fight my way into a deployment. So it must have been Talifar. Because I remember I was in the PA's office mm-hmm. and I was getting like that special clearance because they shouldn't let me deploy at that right. point, you know? Right. And and the PA said to me, he was like, if you fucking die over there of heat stroke, I'm gonna fucking kill you again. Right. You know, right. like something right. like that. <laughs> right. And I was like, I, I ain't gonna fucking die. like that yeah. that ain't gonna kill me. It's like, no, nah, shut the fuck up. Let's fucking do this, man. I don't wanna be non-deployable because yeah. I got fucking hot one day, but it's a real thing. It's a real thing, man. And, and, I, and so it's, it's like, like my yeah. first my first heat stroke was 106.7. This one was 108. Woo! Dang. That's fucking dying. That's, that's cooking that's, brains. That's cooking your organs. Yep. Yeah. How Again, do you like your kidneys? Uh, Scott, <laughs> Scott Zastro, 18 Delta medic, legendary medic, saved my ass again. Probably oh, shit. You know, and 108. 108. My fuck, kidneys dude. my kidneys went into renal failure, shut down. They got all that. I mean, I had some short-term memory loss. I had a little bit of a stutter. I had to go through a full brain eval and to make sure that I had oh, like, cooked like my a nugget. brain injury kind of almost like were they, you were you uh, well fed and well hydrated at this yeah point? this it time just, it, this just, time it was just it's just the it's fucking, because I had yeah. the first one yeah and your hypothalamus which is like your body's thermostat it, now the temperature has been allowed to get up to 106 so it's like oh it's okay so to your go brain this hot. will let you get up to 106 yeah, and then it goes yeah. over and so what I was when I was pleading my case because I I woke up and I knew I was like this is it they're not gonna. Yeah. I can't go back. And like, I'm talking and the doctor's like, listen, man, he's a full bird colonel. He's like, if I were to sign off on this and return you to training and you died, they'd take my rank and kick me out. He's well, and then because it's negligent to send you back. And then yeah. think of the other people you put at risk for for if if you died or or just went down and you're right. in an operational environment. And that's something that's, that's ultimately that's what you what I started control. thinking about is like, yeah. imagine I'm we deploy to hot places. Right. Yeah. And if that had happened on an op and they have to bring my fat ass out like now i'm putting these guys a whole team my, my buddies at risk yeah. you know? so that helped me rationalize it but dude i was crushed i mean I, you totally. think about think about what i took to so get this was on your birthday on my birthday man 2006 oh, yeah yeah and i was in i was in great shape and I, it was tough because i'm like i earned this like i earned this spot i'd gone to yeah. selection twice i'd deployed with the 82nd i'd persevered i'd put you know mm-hmm. and i just felt like i'd prepared i'd felt like i'd done everything right and to have it taken from me. And like, if you fall out of a helicopter and break your back, you can be like, I got out cause I broke my back. But when you get put out, like what, what puts you out of the army and you say heat stroke, I can't help but feel a little bit like a weakling. You know what I mean? But you're right. It's a real thing. Yeah. But it's totally if real. you don't have the physical scars of yep. the injury, you feel like these people probably think I'm just like a malinger or like a quit. Right. Boohoo baby. You know, exactly. Shit. Yeah. But that's why I was non. I put out, I was, that's why I had to fight to be on non or, get on um, deployable status because yeah. when you have one heat stroke you're more susceptible to right more, and so i yeah. feel like the army will let you have one yeah but after that second 
you're broken because yeah, you like proved a pattern at that that's point. Right. It's like, oh, this well, is gonna, oh, it's just going to happen again. Or yep. you're exactly. so much more susceptible to it yeah. happening again, and you're yeah, like yep. a fucking live, and it's and so, it's outside of your control. So I was like, I was like, okay, can I go back to the line? Can I go back to the three two five? Like, nope, you are non deployable, non combat arms MOS. You can be like a U.S. based like clerk. Yeah, and I'm like, why the hell would I be that? Yeah, and I I've, kind of had that option me as well not that there's anything wrong with that job sure, i'm just no, saying for like me, for us yeah, no, for, for like our, for like or it's your goal you had a goal you weren't you weren't you didn't join the army and, and it's the same thing for me i didn't That's join right. the army to do that job right and it's not looking down on that job or not anything but like i had my fucking this was we my had our dream goals. this yeah. is my goal i pursued that yep and so at the time like i, I have i'm a college graduate i've I've, I'm, I've in the army now for four years. I have just reenlisted for four more because you have to have two years left on your contract after the Q course. And so like if I had gone to the Q, it would have been another year of training. Did you get a bonus for reenlisting? No, I would have if I'd finished the, oh, okay. you know? And so they're like, you know, you can reclass and do this thing or we can give you a severance package and you can get out of the service. Take that. So that's what I did. And that gave me like 10 or 12 grand. It's basically like, here's what we would have paid you through the rest of your remaining contract or something. Yeah. And, you know, in retrospect, my buddies have been like, dudes have been like, hey, man, you could have like make them med board you and you could have made them because I don't have a disability rating. I didn't do any of that. Right. I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to hang but around. It was different back then. Was, and now, I, you, now they force you into a fucking right. They, medical and so review ba- and like back then it was like, do like I want to hang now. out at med board for two years and do formations and like just pick up trash and be assigned to like, I mean, I had when I was on rear. And a lot of people in those units are the. They are. They're the. They, they're the yeah, people who is, are kind of building the system yeah. a little yeah. bit, yeah. you know, and yeah. they're not the, they're not the real true. I was in a WTB for a while there and I was the only wounded guy. I was like, what yeah. the fuck? Oh, is, really? Yeah, dude. And I was like, what, wait, fuck. hold on. What is everybody's story here? And I heard the stories and coming from the 82nd and I was, you know, it's like shin my, my fucking, my pointers. beret was legit. And I just, I, and I was just like, I can't, I can't talk to you guys. I can't be around you because you make me so angry. You make me so fucking angry with your, and it's actually in, when I was uh, in basic training, going to airborne school, they lost my medical records. So I was in hold on Sand Hill there for almost, it must have been almost a month or a couple of weeks or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they kept me just because there was a paperwork issue. And so they kept me in the bay with the people who quit basic training for boohoo reasons and i was around those people it's br- like, that's poison for make, the mind we are not the same Dude, i can't i gotta get out of here i can't i don't depressing. i hate being around those kinds yeah. of people i can't and like because they they want they, you they to, try feel to feel the same you, way as they you try to yeah. suck you right. down with them yeah you know and i was like i don't have this mentality nope. and yeah. i don't want to hear it i don't want to be around it and even the little bit of, even the little bit of time i spent at mtb where i'd Show up to reform. I had a permanent profile, so no PT. I mean, yeah. I would still go lift, but sure. like, then I'd go. They gave me some meaningless office job, and I'm sitting around with dudes that are like that. Like they mm-hmm. quit, they wrung out, they would. They're like, and they're the ones bitching about how the army sucks and this yeah, sucks. Yeah, dude, it's just a negative. And I'm like, you know what, person. man? I'm not. Yeah. I'm not like. You're fine. I'm sure you're a cool guy, but don't talk to me like that. I mean, I've wanted to be here, and like I'm upset about this. Right. You know? So, uh, silver lining is I had all my parts, and I felt like I had all my pieces. Yep. And I was devastated, but I took it, took the severance. And, uh, in February of 2007, I was out. That was your, that was your separation. February, 2007. Back home in Denver. All right. Um, I think we can, um, wrap up there. Okay. We'll stop the story there. So that's part and one. And we'll continue next week. And, uh. Cause there's so much more story yeah, left, dude. Like we we're, we're, we're like just getting, right. I mean, that, that's your, like, yeah, there's so much, um, yeah, there's so much more and, uh, we're at the two hour mark. Yep. Um, so thanks th- for having me. Thanks for, thanks, thanks for, for coming listening. out, yeah, man. Absolutely. We're gonna, we're thanks gonna for get, listening. We're going to get right into it. But, uh, for you guys listening, we'll, uh, we'll catch you next week with part two of, uh, Savage Saturdays here with my good friend, Sean Hensley. Rock and roll. Love thanks, you guys. Man. Cheers. Cheers.